Hello everyone and welcome to the new season of Wizards and Wardrobes set in Waterdeep. Uh, without any further ado, let's go round and introduce the players and then I'll have some social links and stuff to give you all. Um, so we'll start in the top left with Charlie. Welcome back Charlie and welcome back Dave. Hello! I was going to say hello as Dave and then I looked at my book and I'm like, I don't know if I have a hello in here. <laughs> hello! <laughs> I'm back to season two with uh, my personal favorite Kenku. Anyway, I'm a little bit biased. I have my book of notes with all of her phrases written down. And I've just realized I don't have a pen. So any interesting phrases are going to have to be typed into a notepad, I think. But yes, I'm very excited. I'm really excited to get into a city campaign and show Falja a new world. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes, but yes, I'm playing Dave. She's a Kenku. She's wild magic. She's divine. She will throw herself off a roof every day. Uh, she can fly now, so it's not really even an experiment for her anymore. But it's an important part of her daily ritual. So yes, thank you very much for bringing us back, Scrap. I'm ready. Awesome. I've been really, really, really looking forward to it. Uh, that does lead us on neatly to Tahina and her character, Falja. Hey everyone! I'm also totally hyped that we are starting season 2 today. I miss all of you on stream, in chat and everywhere so much. Also, I miss Kelly's tweets. <laughs> so much. And uh, I'm going to play uh, my druid, Fire Genasi, ha or rather half elemental, half high elf, half weird pocket dimension creature, Forja Flame Mane the daughter of the desert and when charlie just said that dave is going to show <laughs> Porsche the word i do hope you cast fly on me and give me your hand and say i can show you <laughs> well, that... i totally demand it <laughs> i like i just saw that uh, alice had put that in channel i was like i need to do that but mm -hmm. have Falja be like the scorpion and she's there just happily like clicking along <laughs> oh yes <laughs> anyway sorry <laughs> I'll meet myself again. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I'm very excited to see more of Waterdeep. And of course, we welcome back also Chorus and his character, Kellic Bonewalker. Hey guys, it's great to be back. I'm excited for this new season of Wizards and Wardrobes, and I cannot wait for you guys to, to meet all these new characters, these new people, and this new city that we are about to enter. So I'm super excited. <laughs> Me too. Thank you very much to Likes the Villainor, as we know her, Sheena, who donates her Nat 20 to me. Yay. Um, do you know what? I'm not sure if I'll get to use that this episode. This episode, um, to give you guys in chat a little bit of background, basically these guys have been through the ringer for the last six days. We're going to go for a recap of last season. Um, but today is going to be a little bit more about character relations and, you know, learning a new place. Uh, before we get into that, though, here are my social links. Um, if you're not already a part of them, you should be. Uh, Twitter for sending me DMs about getting onto shows. YouTube, I figured out a much easier way of uploading videos to YouTube last night, and now I am powering through them. Um, I, I, I was as far back as the 8th of August, and uh, now I think I'm up to, like, the 16th or something. So, like, I'm powering through the days. We'll have all them streams up to date. Um, and Discord, if you're not in the Discord, you just should be. It's amazing. Um, also, we have a Patreon where you can support us, uh, should you wish to we are now a full-time streaming service so uh the patreons really do matter so do all the other things um in the bottom there you can see my monthly like costs goal for the month so that's from the 17th of september to the 17th of october um so and we've already made a lot of headway on that you guys are amazing we also have merch and very specifically to this campaign we have dave the divine merch we uh put dave the divine on t-shirts so that is available in redbubble uh you guys can check that out uh we also have a competition running at the moment uh where we are giving away some rainbow colored dice there they are my holding them up doesn't do them nearly as much justice as the picture in the tweet so go and click on that it's not clickbait it's a gleam competition you can win these dice i'll ship them anywhere in the world Go, 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 go. 
Um, and lastly, but most certainly not leastly, uh, we have our tweet up today. And for every 10 retweets, we get a Wild Magic Surge on the, our very own Wild Magic Surge table. Um, as always, these things are down to DM discretion. And um, we might occasionally have re-rolls and things if things are too ridiculous. Uh, but if you guys want to add to the Wild Magic Surge table, I think that gives, well, it gives you a bit of a safety net. Like, you can be ridiculous because if it's too ridiculous, we'll just, you know, do something else. Um... Yeah, so that's everything from me. Um, who wants to start? Maybe, do you know what? I'm My eyes are drawn to Falja to start. Because Falja, really you started in the desert and really it was your your lineage that, that kicks yeah. off this whole tobacco, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well, last season we started in the desert and uh, Vajra was one of the first characters there because she was the only character who was born there. Uh, she's the offspring of the elemental creature that created that landscape in a pocket dimension. And she had been a long time uneasy ally of the orcs who lived there and tried to avoid the assassins who dwelt there and ended up seeing a sign of a phoenix stumbling into those newcomers coming from the outside. And they have been traipsing all over the place from one dire situation <laughs> into the other. Uh, and it ended, or would you rather have to tell the others how it ended? I mean, along the way, one of our numbers had been kidnapped by the merchants. And I think that was the point where everything started, where the real drama, the real meat of last season started when the party set up after Lucian. There was a little bit of drama that started just before that, you know? Episode 1, scene 1, Kellogg dies and a, a rugged assassin carried Kellogg across the desert. And uh, it was the start of something beautiful. Kellogg? Well, you say rugged, I say insufferable and prideful, but, um, last season we, um, Dave, um, Ke uh, Ke Ke Kellick, and of course, Lu 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 Lucian, um, found ourselves in this, this pocket dimension after being brought in by a wizard to clean up his mess, to kill the assassins, as it were. Um, things did not go exactly accor according to plan. Um, our first first interaction with an, ass an assassin was that we... Um, I got stabbed. Um, probably sh should have died. Um, and then we were taken to their headquarters, where Lucian was apparently considered, because, because of his blue skin, to be the chosen one. Because a triton was supposed to come and save them all, and they thought Lucian, though he was a, a tiefling, was some sort of, of chosen god or what have you. Um, and after that, um, we... Met with them, ta 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 talked with them a bit, and eventually some... Yeah, um, uh, Lucian got kidnapped, Dave got stabbed, and then we chased after the, uh, the kidnappers. Um, how did Dave feel about that? Dave, I am pretty sure, woke up on the back of a giant lizard falja, and kind of just was along for the ride while she was recovering but uh we we ended up outside of the merchant's camp and separating as we kind of lay siege to it and we took out the the ballista that was set up and I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, that's right. And then a wild magic surge happened. The desert winds blew in, and Dave vanished, and reappeared at the orc camp. During which time her friends were captured, and taken into the merchant's camp. Dave, 
did her best to signal to the orcs that there was shit going on, but with her limited vocabulary, it was not the easiest of tasks. And then about five minutes later, poof, she reappeared at the merchant's camp. And stealthing in and slowly setting fires to try and create some chaos, Dave made her way around, trying to find her friends, trying to rescue Lucian and Borgia and Kellick. And uh, she found herself in a great tent in disguise as one of the guards from the wall, I think it was. And um, she was waiting and watching as her friends were about to be executed. <laughs> Would you like to retake over the story? Because Dave missed some of the, what went on during that time. Oh, yeah. Who would like to pick up that lovely little bit of story? And likes the villain donates a nat 20 for Dave Falger and Kellick, uh, her guilt was getting to her. Uh, are you guys muted? Or oh, there we go. I think well, Scrap should take over that bit of the story, oh, actually. Oh, well... He was an important, important I think that yeah. bit needs some, some serious DM explanation. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Clay was a donation from someone. Um, <coughs> Josh. Kind of Josh, yes. Uh, he is uh, part of a fellowship. Uh, a fellowship which have roots in some city somewhere other than the desert. But not quite sure where. Um, and, you know, he was capturing them and, you know, taking over the desert. And uh, he didn't like the amount of uh, fight these new adventurers had in them. So he thought he'd make an example of one of them. So he dragged them all into the tent. He was going to kill one of them. I got the players to write me all eulogies. It was beautiful. Um, you should have seen the pleas from several of them as well to kill their character over the others. It was great. Um, and then I literally rolled a dice and we killed that character. And it turned out to be Ahmed who got the hammer. Um, which sort of ignited the fire that burned Clay to the ground. I think. Very much as that hammer was coming down, I'd been sitting on a nat 20 and I had a firebolt and that was my last spell, I think, for that day. Oh no, because it's cantrip. So yeah, I was an out of spells and I literally sent it. And in that moment, it turned into the phoenix, which was Dave's motif for this whole adventure, her part in the prophecy that was going on. And it just smacked Clay and I think set him on fire. And then the guards started fighting and then we were fighting and... Bowser and Kellick helped each other escape and Lucian was released and we made a nice mess of the camp from what I remember. And don't forget Eliana returned as well with the secret and the, yes, uh, the secret cast a fireball spell. I distinctly remember you shouting out, who the hell has these level six spells? <laughs> like, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, he cast fireball. It wasn't at level three. It was like at level six. It was a big boom that came in from the side of the tent. <laughs> Yeah. How did you guys feel about uh, the secret at that point in the campaign? Well, Dave had a special relationship with the secret because Dave had thrown herself off of the roof of the um, assassin camp and nearly potentially died. And the secret had shown up and saved her life and told her that she had a bigger part to play. So I think Dave was definitely in shock seeing the big boom, but she didn't have a problem with the secret. I can't speak for the rest of my party, however. Does it make more sense now why the secret brought in such heavy magic? I mean, yes. Falja? Any... You do learn a ton of shit when you are 3,033 years old. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, also, he just witnessed his, uh, his son. His son die, yes. And when, as we later learn, his, um, he is Paja's, maybe, most likely, father, which makes Ahmed, who died, her half-brother, which you didn't know by the time and still don't know. Not really, at least. What, we player, know. Player knowledge, not character knowledge. Tee hee. clueless. Kellick, you had a pretty big scene after that event. 
Uh, which which one are we talking about? Well, I was thinking burying Ahmed, but if it wasn't, if it didn't mean oh, that much yeah. to you, I guess you I, know. <laughs> there was a lot of things. <laughs> a lot. Um. Yeah, he buried um Ahmed, and Chaja was the one to uh to uh to comfort him, and they kind of just sat and watched. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 as well as what seemed to be a door from the wardrobe, but it didn't have a door. It was just a stone slab. Um, we were trying to figure out what that meant um, until due to a number of, um, of donations from, from somebody who I will not name and shame um, turned into a giant demon and stabbed Fauja twice. And Fauja all... all almost died um and then the the secret and the um and one and one of the uh the npcs ran out into the dunes during a storm um wow. Hid uh ha hadisha um got somehow possessed by something and and ran out as well and by the time that the group uh, decided what what what, what to do, uh, the uh, the orcs arrived. Uh, I want it noted that Dave slept through all of that. Dave yeah. had had good berries and just zonked out for all of this incident. She saw, I think, everyone go to the back of the cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hadisha come out really pissed off. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to sleep now. You guys sort yourselves out. And she woke up to everyone pretty much gone except for the group who were frantic with the storm outside and these orcs on their way. Then we got led to their camp and were told that we were going to enjoy this um this trials that they had, which was was essentially where they weeded out the weak from their uh, their horde, as it were. Uh Kelly didn't didn't take too well to that. Um and he tried to, at one point, stop it. Didn't go too well. Um, tried to help some of the orc kids uh, learn how to fight. Um, didn't do too well on that. But while that was was going on, uh, Fauja and Dave were kind of supposed to keep an eye on on Lucian. But how did that go, guys? How did that go? Well, after about an hour and a half of waiting for Kellick to turn back up, Fauja decided, and Dave had a conversation. Dave said she was going to stay with Lucian because she could handle Lucian. How bad could it be? And Fauja went to go find Kellick. And then Dave got, uh, well, she took babysitting very literally to start with and sat on Lucian. But that didn't work out as Lucian managed to sneak away while Dave, I think she was napping again. I think Dave, I think, crashed out, had another nap, and Lucian got away and stabbed her twice and left her to die. And she very nearly did until luckily her bestie came and managed to fix the holes in Dave, both literal and metaphysical and existential. It was, it was beautiful. It was yeah. beautiful. Um, my favorite scenes because when Fauja had gone to go after Kelek, she uh, stumbled over an orc who was not wearing armor and had no weapons and she followed him to another sacred cave with more pictograms and she learned that he was the orc elder and led um, a group of sorcerers who fed energy into basically some kind of magical heart, energy vortex. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a thunderstorm right on top of me. So if I am suddenly gone, <laughs> then it sends my energy <laughs> dropping out. 
So, uh, but uh, in her conversation, he told her that she should be careful and not get too close to that energy vortex. And she suddenly felt pain and investigating, running, following that urgency, she found her best friend Dave lying there in a puddle of blood about to die and she healed her and gave her wings the power of flight and they both exploded we could see dave the divine soaring the hot currents of the desert air and from up there dave saw lucian who had been traveling through the desert i think because he heard his father's demonic voice was really yeah, I'm pretty sure he'd been given a task i have a feeling that that was the second time dave had been stabbed by lucian yeah it was i i'm losing count i got stabbed a lot of times by lucian in this campaign <laughs> you're not the only one <laughs> yeah <laughs> we just kept getting stabbed by our friend who we kept trying to save i mean the story pretty much wrote itself i feel you know like yeah there's so many yeah, times you get stabbed i called him friend slayer <laughs> he really had the pain for that <laughs> but we confronted him uh Forja in the form of a little scorpion scorpion and to dave's uh cape and then we follow and they followed Lucian into the desert and we confronted him and yeah his daddy gave him some new cool powers and it did not work all that well so yeah <laughs> with uh, both of Kellek's remaining party members and friends in deep trouble we were really relieved when Kellek finally caught up to us except I didn't though no you I, didn't. I uh due to a wild magic surge i got turned into an elf and one of the orcs dragged me to the uh the are are arena and i got thrown in into the fight for my life and i uh and Ke and Ke and Kellick kicked a bunch of butt um met, 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 uh didn't kill um a single Work, um, but survived nonetheless. Um, tried to stop uh, the orcs from trying to kill those that had had um, had lost. Didn't go so well because the orc chieftain got involved and she beat his butt, and he was dragged into basically the dungeons for uh, for torture and and personality reconditioning as it were as to be more more and eh, more amiable to this um they they had no no idea that Kellick was the elf even though he kept saying that he was <laughs> was Kellick no one seemed to care uh, so we got tortured uh Lucian apparently came to his senses right as he stabbed uh fat of fat, uh, of fat, fat, of fat, fat, uh, Fauja, um, again, uh, came to his senses, brought them back into, uh, to town, they all healed up, and then tried to find me and were found out that I was somewhere in the cells nearby. They came to get me out, uh, Lucian, um, and Dave went in after Fauja distracted the guards. Um, well, Dave snuck in first because Dave um, was sneaky and left Lucian and Fauja talking. And because she's a tiny black verb that's really sneaky. And once she was inside, she disguised herself as the dude we met out front, who was like the leader. Mm -hmm. And she he went down and she mimicked his voice to demand that Kellick was released. And the plan was going real well until it wasn't anymore because the leader showed up behind us and then that's when lucian i think came down because he figured out that we'd been gone an awful long time mm -hmm. um and Fauja was scared to come into this cave because she'd been warned about getting too near to the heart of the desert that something catastro cat catastrophic that's the word would uh, happen if she did so lucian showed up and then we had a like a mini little fight but not really and then you turned back into Kellek and were like, uh, hello, yes, see, told you, me, hi. It's canon, that's what happened, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
And then there was assassins afoot, I think. There was trouble coming in our direction again, as usual. Did you just remember that in Dave speak? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's awesome. Forja had a vision while you were gone trying to collect Kellek when she was staying outside. And she saw that there were only two outcomes um, for the party. One of them was going through a portal and the other was stand their ground and defend the heart of the desert. And that's what she tried to do. But thanks to some descent in the party, we got sent around with plane shifts and wish spells and stuff like that. We encountered Theophilius, the one who is responsible for the pocket dimension or was responsible for the pocket dimension. And we ended up through more wish spells uh, back in the desert and we had this race with a whole horde of assassins who tried to storm that cave with the heart of the desert. We had this fight where Dave turned basically in a thunderbird. She had dragon spread, lightning dragon spread uh, cast on herself and was doing those swoops overhead. It was totally badass. <laughs> And we ended up having this big fight in that cave where most of the sorcerers were either um, killed or um, one unconscious. Dave did a very brave heroic thing where she was plunging in the pool, giving her energy to the heart of the desert to keep the desert stable. Kalek was fighting like a dervish and standing at the cave entrance, fending off all those assassins pouring in. And Faja ended up meeting her mother for the first time face to face, the original uh, fire elemental. And yeah, unfortunately, she wasn't the only one ending up in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucian also jumped into that whirlpool and saw um, Faja's mother. And things ended with basically Lucian taking up the orb that had created this place in the first in the first place and binding Forja's mother uh, and taking over leadership of the desert and unbeknownst to us in the name of his father who is this demon or devil lord from I don't know where <laughs> And uh, he's basically the reigning uh, prince or king or whatever you might call it of this place now. And um, he did convince his father to give him one day. And he ended up going plane shifting all of us from the desert into this big sprawling city on a different plane. And we ended up in, uh, in an inn. <laughs> I think we all ended up in one stall yeah we we're in the stall of a bathroom when we and it was a little bit baffling and definitely not the cave that we were meant to be in yeah and everyone pouring out of the bathroom and nothing to see <laughs> yeah and fortunately one day in the desert is only like i think one hour outside of it in a, in a different dimension and he got taken back and um we as players know that everyone in the desert is now enslaved. Their soul had been ripped out by Lucian's father and they have been bound into this gigantic army. And the goal of the demon lord is to use all those highly skilled assassins that have been trained for centuries to kill each other. And orc uh, warriors. And orc warriors against the material plane. So yeah and he gave uh, lucian hadija as a queen to rule over the oh, can you hear the thunder the storm gods are like mm -mm. Yes. wow <laughs> okay <clears throat> found your bought her own sound effects awesome uh, yes. i'm the root of the land <laughs> <laughs> and so meanwhile we back in water deep we enjoyed a little bit of ladies night in the tavern um that's yes, right yeah ladies night ladies night yep and in the middle of attempting to enjoy Ladies' Night, Kellick and Fauja had a, another discussion about what she was and what the plan was. And they heard the distant cries of up on the roof as Dave had scurried outside and found her flock just in time for the nightly uh, tradition of throwing herself off the roof. Only this time she could fly. 
and so that was revealed to her family for better or for worse and she well she didn't fly very far unfortunately she didn't have the desert warm currents to support her she made it to the next roof where she probably collapsed and passed out and uh, Lucian had to find a ladder to go and get her down because at this point I think she was on four or five levels of exhaustion having been uh the one keeping the desert alive. Yeah, I think we brushed over that. Just how much Dave nearly sacrificed to keep the desert alive. Like, sitting on five levels of exhaustion, literally rolling uh, constitution saves to stay alive. Because everyone knows six levels of uh, six levels of, uh, uh, of exhaustion yeah. equals death. Dead. Yeah. But she, she made it back. She got to uh, do her ritual and show her family. And then she went to sleep. Which is Dave's natural state of being, apparently, in this story. Asleep or stabbed. These are the two states of Dave. And Kellick had a scuffle in the bar and went back in to see what was going on. Apparently, one of the Zin, uh, Zintarim was shaking down the, uh, the innkeep, and Kellick didn't take too kindly to that. He punched the daylights out of the guy and threw him into the street and told the innkeep to probably, he probably needed to leave now. And he apologized, but... Yep. Act 1, scene 1 of Waterdeep, Kellick destroys a man's business. Um... (laughs) (laughs) But what 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 happens next? Uh, Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's something else, right? Uh, Lucian went back. Um, his his father de- declined to mention that the uh, the day which he was was talking about was in the pocket uh, dimensions ter- term of day. So Lucian o- only had a few uh, a few minutes. So the group was kind of left with saying their goodbyes. Um, and just simply watched um, Dave and her friends, and it, it's 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 winter time right now. Um, so Kellick and Fauci just kind of stood out in the snow for a while, I think. And Fauci was miserable because it's so fucking cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's frozen water tumbling from the sky. But the mango um, cocktail that she got, she was introduced to mangoes and it decided that is something that she liked. And I can't remember exactly how it came about that Dave received her cloak, but I'm gonna say for now, the new canon, no one argued with me, is that as she was flying between those rooftops and they have those uh, washing lines, that she hit one of those washing lines. And that's how she developed her cloak of billowing, that's, which is orange and floaty. That's exactly how it happened. Exactly. Perfect. Good. I'm glad that is how it happened. Um, but yeah, so Dave does have a cloak of billowing, thanks for Wild Magic Search for chat. And I think uh, when Lucian brought her down, that she kind of joined in Falja and Kellick in the, the hiding, but she was pretty, like, passed out. But she had a little cloak that we could all hide under. Mm-hmm floating around us. And now we need to talk about the elephant in the room, I think. Is that... So... Is it elephant? Is that a new yes. race that I yes, didn't know about? Ex- well, it is in the new ra- uh, Guide to... Ra- uh, ra- uh, ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- uh, to... Ra- to... Ra- to... Ra- uh, to... Ravnica, which will be out in a few months, which you can pick up. On D and D Beyond or on on Amazon. Hashtag, Hashtag not, not sponsored. D and D Beyond, come on, look, come on listen, listen. We need that. We need that. Come back. We need that money, okay? <laughs> oh, I punched my desk. <laughs> uh. Looks like we got a new friend. Oh, hey, Daddy Sheep, do with that ten person raid. You're just about getting as we are. We, we are. We are just about to get into things. So, Kellick. Mm-hmm. Tell us. So, um, so I'm gonna l- bring this up with Dave and Fauja real quick. Do you think 
the incident that we're going to talk about ended in an argument in a good-natured fe- farewell or in this kind of tense retreat? What do you think would have happened from I your character's perspective? I think from Dave's point of view, if he doesn't mind me going first, that it would have ended with a very familiar phrase. We are a weird tent, okay? And that would have been the the parting sentiment in the end of our conversation. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Fausha? And Fausha would be very sad to see Keller go, but when she hears that you're going for a tundra where there is even more snow when it's even colder, she's like, I did promise um, Dave that I would find her voice. Someone has stolen her voice. Do you remember? I helped her take a flight and now I have to get her voice. So I can't leave just yet. I'm sorry, but I do have to uphold my promises. Yeah. Um, for Kellick, he's a little bit mad at the group about the few incidences that uh, that ha- that ha- that uh, that happened in the uh, the caves. Um, he personally feels like he wasn't supported, or that the group didn't. Well, that he didn't do enough um, enough to try to save Fauge's mom. He kind of feels like it's his fault that things have gone down the way way that they have. And so, Kellick has left the party, guys. He he has left. He has gone back home. Uh, to his herd to see if he can try to find some some well-being to try to get his mind back into gear to figure out what needs to be done but he has left the uh, the town and and Fauja and Dave are now on their own and I don't know how long how long how long they've been out on their own in town but Kellick is no longer here, and I will no longer be playing uh, uh, Ke- Ke- uh, Kellick Bonewalker. F at in le- chat, at least please. For this season. F in chat to pay respects. Maybe he'll return one day. Who knows? Um, so, why don't we start then? Uh, Chorus, since you're bringing in a new character, I think we'll try and bring you in narratively. So, mm-hmm. Dave and Falja, let's get started with this thing properly. Let's get started. So, you guys spend your evening enjoying ladies night flying as i recall you had a fairly good night after Kellick Kel- Kel- left you you had drinks and stuff you had a long rest you started to relax perhaps the next morning you might wake up a little worse for wear up to I you mean, what dave... the bird sucks <laughs> dave i think would not have partaken in too much drinking considering her state it wouldn't have taken very much drinking uh but I like to think that they ended up sleeping under one of the tables in that tavern uh, because we'd been given the keys to lock it up. The guy had like just given up, I think, after the incident. And I like to think that we fell asleep under one of the tables. That was our little roof for the night. Because we like been... to imagine that I that I pitched the tent that Forja had with her in the desert in the middle of the tap room, <laughs> and we were in the tent pretending we are in the desert. Everything is fine. exactly. We were very used to sleeping around, and Dave was still finding sand in her pockets and sprinkling it around to make it feel like home for Forja, because you know sand. That's mm. that's a problem when you're in the desert. It's very dusty, and so when we did wake up the next morning, it probably was a rough morning. We have a lot to decompress from. Of course, Forja's mother camped with us, because I think she's still with us, right? Or did she go back to the desert with Lucian? All right, she's gone too. Okay, because we keep forgetting about her, and I'm trying like not to forget about our NPCs this season. Yeah, no, Falja took uh, took Falja's mother was taken back to the desert with Chorus. She is uh, not Chorus with uh, Lucian. She is Lucian. Okay, cool. tied tied to him so, now. Yeah, so that's pretty rough. Falja has basically lost everything at this point. Our fight turned out in some ways to be for nothing. But we don't know the eventual fate of the desert. We know that we managed to keep it existing. And that was a big deal, considering that was very much a possibility to go the other way. And Dave is in rough shape because she has a lot of exhaustion to recover from. And uh, her friend, Kellick, has just left. And Lucian is gone. And she's now back in the city. 
and it's gonna be a big day i think when they they finally get going they finally brave leaving their tent in the middle of the tavern so how late do you think you guys would stay in that tent into the next morning or the next afternoon i think we'd be in there until someone turned up to make noise outside oh yeah (laughs) and we might move so okay around midday there's a Hello? I look at should, should be open by now, it's midday. What are we going to do? I say the king of days. I say that all the time. Should I go there and open? I don't know for, if it's for you, but I can't see Chai moving anymore. For me, she's totally frozen. Yeah, it's very stop motion. It's very stop motion. Oh, there you are again. I'm here! Yeah. My net is fine. I don't understand. Why? Okay. Pourquoi? We're in the same... Pourquoi? We're in the same country and everything. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Is we're, we're sucking all of the internet between the two of us. Yeah. All of the British internet is gone. It's right here. Sorry, you guys. Sorry in chat. Um, <laughs> should, so, we, should we open? I think Dave is going to kind of like shrug and um, peer out through the opening of the tent towards the door. I imagine for some reason when we pitched the tent, we did that natural spiral instinct of having it so that we could see the entrance. I don't know. It should be open by now. We'll just have to go get lunch somewhere else. Oh. Okay then, dear. I hear the Jaggy Fizzle's got good meals on. Oh, I've not tried it. Let's try it. You hear footsteps walking away. <sighs> Go somewhere else, maybe. How do you always say? Up on the roof. Do we need to go there? Yes. And I will uh, put down the tent and wrap everything up and put everything on my back, just like I would when I would venture out into the desert to have every everything I own with me right now. Looking at Dave, you know, in the desert, I was your guide and I helped you. And I don't understand this place. I don't understand um, this land. So you need to be my guide here. Now, thank you very much to Isriva, who's already come in. With the wild magic surges. I'm going to stagger these. Because the wild magic surges are going to come a little bit into this season's plot. Uh, so, Falja and Dave, please both roll me a wild magic surge. Just the one for now. It's 423, right? 430 now. Ooh. What? And that's true. People in chat, if you want to add to the thing, you can go to the suggestion box thing and add things there. Oh, 200 and... 50 and 262. Very close numbers. Very close. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> so Dave, as Forja is kind of proposing this and sorting out, is keeping an eye out by that door so that we can get, like, cleanly away. She kind of missed what the arrangement was with this place, but she figures we don't get to keep it and stay here, so we need to sneak out and get moving. This is perfect. Oh dear. Oh, is it is it squeaking shoes again? <laughs> no, Dave. <laughs> oh no, my feet flip flop. I forgot about that. Oh, that uh, all of the wild magic surges from the desert are nullified. This was from the water deep. This, this was from water deep. Only time the ones from water. Yeah, my feet make that flip flop sound when I walk. So, are you guys sneaking out the back door or something like that? Yeah, just like a side door. Just get out of there and pretend we went there. Okay. On the way through, uh, Falja, you'll find a small glass ring glass ring that's Mm -hmm. perfect does something happen not a thing fits my silver bracelet that i have from iliana matches my pendant which is made of glass by forsha yeah and the armor and everything (laughs) didn't like that elbow anyway Okay, so okay. heading out. Like stealth rolls, just in case anyone is watching this place. 
Uh, yes, you can give me stealth rolls. Are you heading out the back door, a side door, something like that? Uh, yeah, side. If there's like a side door, that would be yeah. preferable, not outside. Oh, if you want, you could go up onto the roof and leave by the roof. There's a roof. Uh, no, <laughs> a side door would probably be best. We can go up a different roof. Okay. Yeah, let's I think side door point. is less conspicuous than climbing up onto a roof in the middle of the day. Ooh. Uh, remind me, I recover one exhaustion point per sleep, right? You do. Okay. Poor I'm Dave, so tired. Three. I think I'm still on disadvantage then for this check. Unfortunately so. Yeah. That's an 11. So the door swings open with a slight creak, and outside are a... a, a what do you call a group of Kenku? A large group of flock. Kenku. A flock. A large flock of Kenku. All of whom, as soon as you open the door, begin like squabbling and like, like you hear people going, Dave the Divine! Dave the Divine! Dave the Divine! As number 262, his target is now famous around the world. Um, <laughs> and all the Kenku in the world recognize you as Dave the Flying Kenku. Word does spread quickly <laughs> on the Kenku gossip line. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there is a flock of Kenku who are just like... Oh, they have heard of you. You're Dave the Divine. You're Dave the Divine everywhere, not just in the desert. Do you think I could fix your friends? Me? Like that? Yes. We should try that, then. Chorus, could you make your first world magic surge for me? I know we've not even introduced your character yet, but do it for me anyway. Uh, and Dave is gonna make sure we're like tight in this back alley, so like no attention is being drawn to this massive group of like squawking, squabbling birds. There you go. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Yep. It feels like uh, we're out of practice because we haven't done this for two weeks. I'm like trying to remember what Dave can say. <laughs> well, um, first of all, Dave, uh, Dark Aardvark, or Natalie as we know her, um, has donated for you to have your next role at normal. They've given you an advantage, but to give you a bit of a break. Thank you. Uh, and the thing is with this season, advantages and disadvantages we're going to use straight away. As soon as we've got them, we're going to burn them. But 20s and 1s we can store as normal. Um, carry on. What are we going to do? I say, standing in front of the flock and looking up. I, I can't do this right now. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I, when I look at the Kenkus, like I looked at Dave, do I see, do I see their metaphysical bodies and the, the same missing gaps that Dave had before I did heal her? It's very strange. Um, now that you've lost the power source that is the desert, Looks like we've got a new friend. you can't see this special energies uh, anymore. Yeah. Oh, I am not sure that I can help your friends. When I look at them, they are just birds. You know, I don't see anything that it needs to be mended. But maybe it will come in time. <gasps> you know what? My place was my mother's land, right? So now we are in a new land. I just have to find my aunt or my uncle or my cousin who ruled this place. The elemental that is powering this plane, okay? If we find it, then I can introduce myself and maybe then I can help your friends. Nothing in life is certain. There's always a chance. That is the truth. If you were an elemental that would create this weird city, where would you hide? Where would be your heart of power? I, I kind of look at the flock and I kind of lean into you and I whisper, up on the roof. That is a very good idea. And I make this gesture and to help you up the roof. Let's climb up there and search for my relative. And as her I hands... I introduce myself, and this is proper. As her hands come out, Dave actually takes them, not understanding the gesture, and says, 
be among us and be free. Your place, your tent, as given by me. Am I part of the flock now? And she looks to the flock and like gives them a look like, say yes. <laughs> like almost as one, all heads bob. <gasps> I am very honored, I say, and I bow very deeply to you. Thank you for making me one of your tribe. And they, they now that now that the, the formality is out of the way, they all bustle around and start like you know fussing around you, like picking at your clothes and like you know affectionately, not like that, but like yeah. um. I, I start hugging random king. <laughs> I am Foja. I am Foja Fleming. It is very good to make your acquaintance. A high ground is always good, and Dave is gonna start in her normal way of climbing up to the roof, which is using a drain pipe. Which is precarious at best. <laughs> make okay. Make me some sort of save. Maybe. Uh... Would you like an athletics check? Can I yeah. help her? I would like to assist her, like basically climbing behind her and push. Give me an athletics check, and uh, there's a sweet spot on this one. You want to roll higher than a five, but less than a fifteen to be successful. I have a minus two. This can only go well. Oh. I rolled so. I'm rolling this at normal because of the gift from Dark Aardvark. Uh-huh. So that would be a six. <laughs> uh, it's already taken into account the minus two, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Of course it has. I'm just being dumb. So, yeah, you can climb this rickety drain pipe all the way up. Falja, however, also climbing the drain pipe on a five, which was the bottom of the DC. I did say over a five. Uh, the drain pipe begins to come away from the wall slowly <laughs> at first. Daisy. I would like to create a torn whip and sling it around to pull us back to the wall. <laughs> or something. As you're starting to slowly bend. <laughs> We've been here one day, we're already breaking the sea. <laughs> well. However, I, I think with all of the flock around you, they sort of like support you and they climb up and manage to like hold the drain pipe together and you can get onto the roof anyway. Um, however, once you're on the roof, the drain pipe just falls away. So now there's only one way down. I look oh, at the drain pipe falling away, look at Dave and I say, oopsie daisy. From the roof, uh, tell me, sorry, who has the highest passive perception out of you two? I'll show, I, think. I think I should have to Oh, I'm of course. On 13. <laughs> of course. And Falja, as you're used to looking at the weather, perhaps you'll look at the clouds, which are full of these mm-hmm. black clouds, like the sort that were only seen really towards the very end of the uh, of your time in the desert. And you can see this yeah. white snow falling all around. Uh, except for over in one region of the city. Tell me, uh, Chorus, where would your new character, which region of the city would they be in? Hmm. They would be in the Dock Ward. And the Dock Ward, let me get this up real quick, is is probably the, um, the it, well, it's, as the, as the na- name says, the Dock Ward is the um, place where the, uh, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart, uh, the heart, the harbor and ship and ship and ship and ship and ships are it's always um filled with people there's noises of of sit of sit of sit of sit of sit of sit of sailors bring uh bring uh bring uh in uh crates and and goods in from the ships and onto ships and there are a number of shops and and eating plate a plate a plate, a plate, a plate, a plate, uh, places there, 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 uh, there as well. So, cool. Why would you be outside at the moment? Just out of interest. Well, it's usually it's probably around lunchtime, right? Yeah. It's probably um, they're probably making their rounds. Um, probably going to the cookhouse hall, which is this uh this this giant hall where uh where you can get a meal for about uh, about two cop uh, 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 two copper, um, but probably just trying to get something to eat right now. 
Fantastic. So as you look over, you can see towards the dock district, you can see this vast blue uh, across. It looks like a blue desert, Falja, across the sort of a blue, green, gray. Uh, you can see dunes, but they're moving a bit faster than you're used to. Uh, and on it, there looks to be like big land craft which move with sails. Uh, and as you look over towards that direction, you also see men appear in the sky and fall to the ground screaming wait what <laughs> around your character chorus <clears throat> as wild magic surge 219 it's raining men <laughs> <laughs> oh it was ladies night last night well, come then. on uh, so bodies just begin hitting the ground around you with like splats as they are uh, falling from this great height. Um... Is that a normal? <laughs> they immediately <laughs> run for uh, to to like find find somewhere to hide because <laughs> they have no idea what's going on right now. Why don't you give us a character description as you run from these bodies and give me okay. a, some sort of deck save to avoid the falling men as okay, they so, splat around you. So throwing aside the um, the, bowl, the bowl of soup that they have, let me get... And this is going to be a little bit of a, lo a, lo a, lo a long one, so just bear with me. Uh, the descri descri description of this person is they are dressed in... Rogue le 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 uh le mm. leathers, warm browns and subdued or 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 oranges and reds. They they have a coat with a hood that is down with uh with a with flo with flourished co a co a co a co a coattails that co comes up in a large co co a co co a co co a co co a co a co a co a color that is inset with this this diamond pattern inside it's reds or 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 oranges uh things like that they have long thigh high boots with a with 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 a slight heel light red wine pants they have fingerless gloves that go up to the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the elbow, and they have a simple belt around their waist that has a a a um a um a number of knives and a warm red-handled uh rapier on the left side. Um, they're they're small, about five foot one, a, a bit pear a pear a pear pear a, a pear shaped. Uh, they they have a shul, shul, shoulder length cur 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 uh, cur 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 uh, cur curly uh, gold and red hair of that that's buzzed to one side um, that kind of hangs off in this kind of kind of of of, of mess on, on the right. Um, they have a large scar that kind of hits around their uh, their uh, their left their le their left eye, which is in this this starburst uh, scar white um, that kind of just burst forth. And there are two trails of scar that go around uh, the left side of the face um, and down to the cheek. Um, the, uh, the eye there is bright white, um, at, 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 um, as if blind, but at the same time, their right eye is this golden, almost bronze. They have, have this, co this, co this copper bronze skin, and they have very long, especially long for an elf, um, uh, ears that kind of curl at the tip. Um, and their name is Redleaf. Uh, um, and, um, Redleaf is, is, is a she, um, so she, her, but 
Um, but for right now, they are kind of very confused by what's going on right now, and they are being brought along with a a, a spring sprite that kind of zips around them. Very confused. It's like, it's like Gus, do you know what's going on? Did you play a prank again? This isn't funny. Uh, the, the old sprite uh, just like, uh, oh, don't give me that. Uh, you can see a chef like nearby the soup kitchen going, you there, come on, get in, get in. It's like, and she dives in. What? The wizards or, or, or something. It's like, what is going on outside? I, it's happening all over the city. Random bursts of magic are affecting people. And the black staff is involved in this or some or or somehow at least? Uh, there's been no official statement. Not that I've seen. Well, at least they can't get a get a get a get, get, get in here. Uh, you hear on the roof several thuds as though the reigning men are following you. The wild magic seems to stick to just one person. It's most peculiar. Well, I hope it's not me. It's like, um... No, no, I mean, each one chooses a person. Just last week, I was, I was walking around with a, an, uh, and my ladle had an annoying orange face on it all day. How'd that go? Well, I drowned it in the soup, of course, but. It was very puzzling for a moment. <sighs> okay, um, can I get a, um, if you don't mind, can I get a new bowl, please? If that's all right. I kind of spill, spilled it outside. Yes, yes, yes. Help yourself. And he gestures over to the bowl. Uh, thank you very much to Natalie, who donates for an advantage to Red Leaf. Uh, and we are going to pan back across to the rooftop, where Fauja and Dave, seeing this, I would like you to make your second Wild Magic Surge, please. Uh, each one of us, or...? Oh, yes. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, not so close this time. Ooh. Sorry, I rolled the wrong number, but close enough. I rolled a 420 instead of a 430. Oh, yeah, that's close enough. Uh, I need to look up the spell for that one, but that's amusing. Uh -oh. 134 the target remembers the original reason they left their village and started this journey it just hits you suddenly oh no you have a flashback give us a flashback to the day that you left my flashback all right so dave had just had one of the worst days of dave's life and she had seen a cart on its way out of town and the cart was stacked high with chickens and crates and so she kind of pushed herself in between these chickens and these crates and is cruising out of town. And as she looks behind her, there's a richly dressed older gentleman stood at the gates with his arms crossed, just watching her leave. And there's the sense of never being able to come back. And halfway through the journey on the chicken cart, she finds that it's arrived in the small village uh, where the horse is being changed and looked after. And she hops off of the cart and she sees a bulletin board. And on this bulletin board are tacked lots of uh, posters and adverts and things. And on one of them, there's wizard seeks help, uh, fortune awaits. And she rips this down and tucks it into her bag and she sets out to find this wizard and to seek the fortune and it ends up that she finds herself in a jungle outside of a temple goes into the temple then finds herself in a wizard's cottage then finds herself crossing through a wardrobe and into the desert before being thrown out of the desert and finding herself back here in Waterdeep where her whole journey had begun and it's a very quick moment, and she's like, oh, yeah, that happened. 
Yep. That beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um and Falja Falja, 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 please roll me a one D six. Uh oh. That can't be anything good, so hmm. two. You're safe, you're with Dave in the clock. We'll be fine. What is it? <laughs> For the next hour, all of your dexterity rolls will be made at disadvantage. Okay. And it's any snow, isn't it? <laughs> any damage that you take from a failed dexterity check will uh, be increased by one d six necrotic damage as you have been hexed. Okay then. <laughs> it's the snow. <laughs> so... Oh, you are hexed with a cold. Yes. You yeah, have a I sniffle. <laughs> Something is wrong. <coughs> so, is it supposed to be so cold? Dave kind of pulls some of her orange glowing cloak over Fauja's shoulder and is busy like looking at these men descending from the sky and having had her flashback is definite that this is some wizardy bullshit. If she's ever seen wizardy bullshit, this is wizardy bullshit. Um, and she will turn to the flock and say, maybe tomorrow, and run just as quick as her little flip floppy feet can carry her across this roof, and hope that Fauja keeps up, because she is going to go and deal with this wizardy bullshit before it takes over her city. <laughs> okay, I will run after. <laughs> You're running off the roof, are you? Or? Uh, is it like in a big city where houses are crossing to houses, or...? Uh, to some extent, yeah. Think of it like Assassin's Creed. You're gonna have to make dexterity checks all over the place to get across this jungleless rooftop. Or uh, shift and grab on to Dave and we can fly! <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I shift uh, shape because this is... If Dave fun. looks back and Fauja hasn't changed form, she'll go, hi yeah, And hold her wings out to imply to Fauja what she wants. Yeah, I would actually transform into a little scorpion and climb up on my friend Dave's shoulders, sitting there, looking around with my scorpion eyes. Okay. <laughs> and in the most impressive moment, Dave hits the edge of this roof and just spreads those wings and points towards the dockyards. Her orange cloak is billowing in nice contrast with her black feathers. The snow is falling, another contrast against black feathers. And she flies like the glorious bird that she is, right? Yep. Uh, still, that slight illusion of the phoenix, the slight orange that is your gift from the desert surrounds you. And uh, you can fly with your orange cloak billowing behind you. It's kind of hard work because it's definitely not desert winds out here and she's kind of tired. So it's a lot of huffing and puffing and occasionally it looks like we're about to like Career uh, into collide, a building. Yeah, collide with a building, and instead you just hit the flip flop of Dave's feet, hardly <laughs> scrabbling along the top to get some more speed so she can take off at the other side. I and imagine... we're like dodging chimney stacks. I imagine Farja hanging on and pointing out with her tail <laughs> where the next building is. And coming. behind us, there's just this chorus of like up on the roof as the entire flock throw themselves off the roof in an attempt to fly which doesn't probably end that well for them, but it was only a not super tall building, so we were okay, I hope. Please be okay, Flop! So, uh, the Flock indeed are following, and uh, they're going to run. I'll make a... I'll make, you know, I'm going to do it in thirds, I think. I'll make some dex checks in thirds. Uh, hang on, do I have a... I don't think I have... Uh, have I got something I can use? Ah, oh, that'll do. Apparently, when you're world famous, you become very responsible for a lot of people's lives. <laughs> That's not too bad. The first ones manage to jump and they float to the ground, not really able to catch up. The second one's a little less grateful. Uh, and, oh, they actually make it... The, the, the third group make it across a few buildings. You inspire them so greatly that they manage to, like, hmm, 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 not flying, but just about get just to the hopping. next building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, just sort of, like, jumping and gliding. and. Parkour as they go. Yeah, yeah. Or parkencore, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So you guys are going to descend on Redleaf very quickly. Redleaf. What's going on in there? She's just enjoying her meal right now. She just, she's reclined in a stool, has her feet propped up, her boots up, you know, just kind of like, poof, poof. And just like enjo enjo enjoying her soup, just trying to ignore, ignore the poof, 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 poof. And then I imagine like over the roofs nearby, you just hear this thunderous sound of feet. Like it's a new like rhythm added into the sound of bodies just hitting the floor outside. So this is how I'm gonna paint it. So um, obviously rooftops are made for holding snow, holding rain, uh, occasionally high winds. Bodies, mm, not so much. Thank you for that sub, Ed, and also for pointing out that I haven't got my uh, follower things on screen. Uh, there we go, that's now a thing. Um, so, as the bodies hit the ground, hit the roof, the, the roof... hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor. The roof begins to slowly, you can hear the sounds of creaks as the roof begins to slowly give way. And uh, I think that as Dave and Falja are just about coming in to land on the roof, that is when, uh, with comedic timing, the roof will crumble, give way, and there'll be a, like a mass fall to the floor. Unless you can all make me dexterity saves. Hey. How's your included? Disadvantage for me. Hey, it doesn't matter either way. Including me on this? Or... Oh, yeah, well, the roof's about to fall in on you, so yeah. Oh, fun. <laughs> so you all roll out of the way. You can all take half of this damage. Hmm. I'm going to use one sec. I've got some for this. Here we go. So you can each take four damage. Uh, except for Falger, of course, who takes no additional damage. Because a half oh. of one is nothing. And I'm going to take my uncanny dodge. So I don't take nothing. And Dave, sorry, because I succeed because I'm a rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, with 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 uncanny dodge, I believe, get to negate on a s succeed. I'll I'll cross check that, but yeah, sure. Check. Dave, having come in through this roof, surrounded by the debris, is gonna look at Falja and then look down at her own stomach and like pat it. Trying to figure out how fat she's gotten since she's been in the desert that she can now collapse roofs. Oh wait, no, that's that's evasion, which I get on seven. This corpse is looking at so her own take... belly as well. Which like... <laughs> <laughs> pincer's like And as she's like patting her stomach, like it's not that big. It like grumbles and complains that it's hungry. Cause Dave hasn't had breakfast yet. And she has a hungry burb. So, crawling out of the wreckage and checking out this place, her nose or her beak rather, like, instantly goes up and she can smell the soup. And Dave, in classic Dave style, goes to find this food. She's got little Falja Scorpion, there are human bodies around, which is kind of distracting, but at the same time, the food and the stomach are having a communication, and Dave goes in search of a soup bowl that is not overturned. I still sit on your shoulder, if I may. Looking at the world through scorpion eyes. Hey you, Kenku. Did you do this? No. Maybe? <sighs> it's fine, it's fine. <sighs> Are you sure? Because you came in the same same exact way, way ways these, uh... This folk. Gosh, I'm gonna have to call the guards or something. Hey you, Kenku, did you do this? I'm gonna go get I the guards. I wave my stinger around. Let's <clears throat> grab. Hey. So hey. Redleaf is gonna go see where the guards are. Dave, soup bowl, like half the face, puts the soup bowl down and runs after Redleaf, grabbing on to like the back of trousers and like. Whoa, 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 darling. What? 
Don't tend. Being a bit friendly there, aren't you? A wizard. Okay. What? I don't. It seems like the perfect time, Redley, for you to roll your second one magic surge. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Oh, wait, I have a whole other page of quotes I've got about. 61. So, Dave, uh, let's go of your waistband and like points up at the roof and goes, Skidaddle, Skidoodle, your sword is a doodle. Wizard. I don't, I, I don't. I should get out of here. This is. Theodephilius, wizard. Have I heard heard of this name? It's like, Dalin. I appreciate you trying to explain, but I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm I'm gonna leave before the god the gods, um uh I, um I get um I get here. I suggest you uh you do the same. That is a problem for later, me. Scorpion Forger looks at Dave with this. And Dave, giving up on getting too much more soup down her beak, is going to go and poke one of the bodies on the floor to see if they're alive. Realizing that these are actual people and not some sort of weird illusion, or or maybe they are. Let's get closer. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, so um, these are bodies of real people. At which point, Dave, like, pulls Falja down and puts her on the ground and is, like, looking urgently around. Ah. I'm going to transform back when she puts me down Ooh. like that. Dave instantly goes to that EMT pouch of good berries. And I start also feeding good berries to people. Or I will uh, make a medicine check to see if they are alive, if they have survived their tumble down from the sky. Uh, so they've fallen from a great height. Some are instantly, you can see, not mm -hmm. salvageable, but others have landed on top of other bodies and things. And um, with a 15 medicine check, you can... You can Stabilize you, you, people? Well, yeah. It's sort of... Uh, you, you're, you know enough about medicine to know that you can stabilize some of them, but some of them it might be better to just put them out of their misery. I mean, I could create a healing spirit in order to... Uh start healing people right yeah you could do that yeah i think i'm going to do that new spell everyone and mm. while Fausha is casting that dave is going around with good berries and like munching and like baby birding all of these people and whispering like a phoenix rising <laughs> trying to encourage them to come back to life <laughs> i would like to imagine this when Fausha is waving her fulgurite stuff and summons the spirit of healing that it looks like a phoenix <sighs> Uh, in this burst of flame, basically, but non-tangible flames. And every time that Phoenix touches someone with the beak or the wing, they get their six hit points. And I'm using my turns to move the Phoenix through that space and let it touch everyone that can be still saved. Okay, so uh, it mm -hmm. sounds a lot like someone turns the volume up, you know, as the groans return with this healing. It's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 you know, just people generally like a few cusses in the room as uh, people are healed up. Um, but yeah. What am I going to do with all of you? Where are you all coming from? I say as I guide that spirit through the room. And oh. Red Leaf's gonna lean up against a post and be like, huh, and just watch. I lean down to one of them who looks not as badly hurt, and after the spirit heals that person, I softly poke them on the shoulder and say, Who are you, and where do you come from? Oh. Why do you, are you falling from the sky? Did you anger the spirit of this place? Is this your pun punishment? What spirit of the place? I was working on the ships. On the ships? Yeah. What's a sheep? I say. <laughs> Today. 
Okay, I've got it. How does someone who spent a season in the desert describe a ship with a limited vocabulary? Be among us and be free. Hey! So it is like a group? Something that the, over the dunes? What's I shipped before. Who are you? I say. Kind of nod at her. It's like. Name's Redleaf. What's your What's your name? I am Faja Flamane. I'm the daughter of the. I was the daughter of the desert. Interesting. Well, how long how long have you been in Waterdeep? For about twelve hours or so. Right. So out of town, 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 towner. Look, you're doing you you're doing some good stuff, but once they once the guards show up and they see you doing your ma uh your uh your magic, they're gonna have some some questions. Hearing the word guards, Dave reaches into her pouch and pulls out a dagger and points it and says, I like things that are sharp better. Whoa, slow down there, Blackbird. Listen. It's like. Is a magic not gonna allowed? Take kindly to I that. Not like that. No, not unless you've got some sort of. of, of I I did not make them fall from the sky. I just, I, I am healing them, right? That is good. Yeah, it's good, but they might still have some questions for you. Are they like assassins? Don't they like the magic? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The assassins, they don't like the magic. Um, they forbid it because they think that that is the punishment. I don't That's know. I don't there know. There are assassins afoot. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are, honey. But to be honest with you, um, guards aren't usually ass um, assassins, though I don't know what kind of cult or sect you ran, ran, uh, ran in, into. Did you run into some, uh, uh, some, um, some cult of Bane people? Wizard in the desert. Yes. Right. And the orcs, of course. And the merchants. And the other of the phoenix or something? I mean, they were once a war band. I... I'm sorry, hun, hun but you're but you're gonna have to start from the top, because I have no idea what you're trying to say. Once upon a time, very, very, very long ago, a wizard created a magical place where he put assassins who tried to kill him in. And my mother got caught in that magic wilderness that created that place, and she decided to make it a habitable plain and create a desert. And she fell in love with one of the assassins. During this whole time, she she, said, hmm? she's just staring at Gus, just like, "Can you believe this? Like right now?" Oh, Gus got crushed by the rooftop. Uh, that was what the three was that I rolled earlier. Oh shit! Dave's <laughs> <laughs> the whole time is like. Gonna take a few you. minutes and find from mill from mill from mill from mill from mill from mill from mill. Takes one uh, hour. Familiar, familiar again. It takes ten minutes. For a bit, for not on. For a ritual. You. So while you're going about this, she's just doing yeah, her thing. I, I'm directing the the Phoenix spirit in order to heal everyone, and then I tell you in great length and detail about the vendetta of the Arcs and the assassins, and how we got mixed up in that, and that we are now here. And now I need to get much stronger in order for Lucian to free his soul from his father. And I have to save my mother from from enslavement. And I also have to find the, the voice of Dave, the divine, because I promised her that I would make sure that she would be complete. And when I am at it, then I need to find whoever spirit is powering this place because it would be very impolite not to... Um, do my hellos and introductions now that I'm here, right? I mean, she might, or here, or they might be related with, to me. Does not look very much like a fire because of all that weird well, frozen stuff falling from down, the sky. Well, slow down, honey. Just, just 
simmer down. Um, what is a honey? It's a, it's an affectionate term. Um, okay. Um, how do I put this? Um, this dimension that you're from. This isn't like that. This is this is Faerun, and you're you're in uh, the uh, the city of splendors. Huh. All right, and if you want to talk to who control, control controls the place, you're you're gonna want to pray 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 to the gods. They might m might be uh, be 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 willing to uh, to hear you out. Maybe. Yes. Oh, one thing that minute. is sacred, and that is in nature. I say and make fire dance over my fingers. Right. Um. I would keep that Still on. Still works, there. so someone must be powering this land. I can feel uh, the power. That's of land. that's a long story. Um. Uh, but I would keep magic on the down low, unless you know how to use it uh, discreetly. Um, most of the time, you have to have, have papers for that. Um, papers. As for the Kenku's voice, I don't mean nothing, but. By, by, uh, by, uh, by this, but Kenkus just don't speak like you or me. They, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they mimic uh, things that they hear. I look at you with a da. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that, but her voice has been stolen. Her original voice has been stolen, well, just like flight had been stolen. I mean, oh, good luck trying to find find that out. Most people don't know how exactly. That turned out to be, but good Most luck with that. Most people are stupid, then. It is written. Right. Well, y'all have fun. I'm gonna go. Um. By the way, and <laughs> this is Gust. Say hi, Gust. Enjoy your nap. <laughs> right. Are you the spirit of the land? <laughs> no, he's a sprite. This is, he's, he's with me. He slaps at you. Yeah, spread it around. Spread it around. I hold out my hand. I am Faja, flame mane. Faja. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Are you a spirit of air? Yeah, he's, a, he's a spring sprite. Get, 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 get. What? Spring. Look, don't, don't try to con, con the bumpkins, all right? Are you like you like to jump? Nah. But you said you're a spirit of spring, springing, nah. right? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> jump to the. He's like slapping at Ridley. Fuck! No! 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 <laughs> he wants you to think that he's an uh, a noble. A noble spirit. You know what? Mmm, tasty. Now. Wait, what? I would ask that you do not eat my Sprite friend. I'd appreciate it if you did not do such a thing. Ah! <laughs> like he's gonna jump in Red Leaf Satchel or whatever, a backpack. Mm -hmm. Still. <laughs> I was not aware that there the were spirits of jumping. <laughs> It is must be a very complicated you, you place. You really are not from a, around here, are you? No. What you gave it away? We have been trying to be very respectable, I say, and put my clothes on. <laughs> and are you still wearing the same clothes that you're wearing from the uh, the? We did not make a shopping trip, so yes. Nope. <laughs> So I have um, the veil and all those uh, glass things and the glass armor. And his cloak is billowing dramatically behind her. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Y'all are interesting, and I like interesting. Stick with me for a little bit, all right? There are people falling from the sky on top of you. I'm going to look Anybody into the hole. <laughs> is it still like raining people nah. outside <laughs> um 
it's it's sort of ceased for now. But Dave, if you could roll me your third world magic surge as you caught the short straw on the uh, retweet. All right. 1d4 30. 183. On a 183. Carry on. Okay. I do actually have a question. Dave being arcane and wild magic y. Would she recognize what a sprite is? Oh, as... yeah, you're from around yeah, this place. Did, yeah. You know all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. I have a theory. I have once seen this big um, sandstorm creating this whirlwind, and it was basically pulling up the merchants from a caravan, and then it was like <laughs> throwing them into the sky. And he said he's from. Um, whatever creature is traveling over the dunes out there, right? So maybe they have been sucked up by this wind and blown dunes? into the air. You mean dunes the ocean outside? Water. Yeah, the weird, the weird dunes. Dunes water. That is water? Is this the place where the dead people go, just like in the desert? No. No. Yes. <gasps> is this the place where the tritons live? I heard once about that. I met Alex. Um, there are there are mer people under the the uh, the docks. She told me about swimming and pad. Oh, is that what those creatures are doing on the dunes? They are paddling. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Hmm. Um, you probably Caravan. don't want to swim in it right now because it's. Caravan C. Like a caravan, I see. Sea caravans. Okay. I got this. Sea caravans. Fly. They if you fly? Excuse me, I'm going to talk to my friend here real quick. So, uh, Gus, come here. Uh -huh. Your dead friend? <laughs> oh, Gus. It's like. <sighs> So, they seem, seem to be from out, out, out of town. Uh-huh. What? They got magic, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good stuff, too. You uh -huh. saw that? Well, you 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 didn't see that on, on account, account of you getting uh, crushed to death. Apologies yeah, for uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we keep an eye on him? In the background, like... you hear they go. Bleh! I, I feel if they're left to their own uh, devices that they're gonna end up dead somewhere. In a, How's your flame in a ditch. name? You like her, don't you? Just because one person gives you a bit of 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 of. Respect. Uh, account, yeah, respect, and you, you all <sighs> could take them to the end. Uh -huh. well, we need to get her some clothes, some clothes, some clothes at, le at least. Oh, you like, oh, How's your flame then? We, we need to get her some clothes. Otherwise, oh, she's she's oh, gonna look. Um, How um, loud are you talking? Like, like. Like, 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 uh, a w um, a whisper at this point. Oh yeah, it, yeah. yeah I think like... Gust has one volume. <laughs> <laughs> Do um, I hear that? This discussion about my clothes. It's, it's like, look, to be not be nice to her, she looks like somebody who's out out from the uh the hanging a lantern. Yeah. Gus slaps you. Ah! <laughs> what? Don't slap me. I'll tan your hide. of the desert. What is that about me? <laughs> Do you want it to, uh, to stick with us? Maybe. There's some clothes involved if you want them. What is wrong with my clothes? What am I going to do they with not, all of you? They are not appropriate for the uh, the cl 
clon the clon the uh the climate deer and i can tell by the uh by your nose little miss sniffles gust comes out from your backpack and floats over onto Falzer's soldier shoulder hey there oh. i like you i like you you look like a spirit of the land uh-huh <laughs> Do you think that my clothes are wrong? Do you think it would be warmer? It would be uh -uh. Maybe with more clothes? I mean, I am totally veiled, right? So there is not much skin showing besides the face right now. I don't know what is wrong with this. It's pretty. I like it myself. And I made all the glass on it myself. And I'm pick picking at the baubles. But maybe something for underneath. Gust. I heard you said that everyone can tell that I'm not from here. And then I will pull back my hood and reveal the fire that is my hair. You Ooh, can a groom in whatever you want. It will still be a groom. Right. Well, I've seen Jinnasi uh, before. Um, we can find, can find you some clothes, I think. Can't hear you. Hello? I think that's a problem in your end, Tahina. Okay. Hmm. Can you hear us now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carry on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, are there guards now at this point? Because it's been a, while, been a while. Funnily enough, no guards have arrived. What about everybody else in here? Because it's pretty packed most of the time. Uh, well, How yeah. Are our little EMT victims. Uh, they are sort of like some of them are getting up and hobbling away. Those that those that will be able to, um, others will need to take a long rest, and they're doing so wherever they lay, uh, and mm. some just aren't gonna make it. So, um, Redleaf, could you please make me another wild magic search? Thank you very much, Isra. Oh boy. Two hundred and seventy-seven. Two hundred and seventy-seven. Uh, the target can tell the time perfectly. You suddenly, your brain is suddenly blessed with an in, like the back of your mind, suddenly blooms, and it is the passage of the sun across the sky. It is the passage of the clockwork ticking, as you now have uh some, uh some extreme sense of the tick. It makes so much sense with what Redleaf is that Redleaf would know what the time is. Like that, the essential moment that makes up living, that unclaspable moment you have a mm -hmm. full understanding of. The, the tick, the, the moment. Oh. Time is money after all, so... Why don't we get get y'all some food? You look like uh like you're hungry. Food and ale, please. And I and while I would say the soup here is great, I'm sure you don't want wood chips in it. Wood chips. No. At at gas and at step. No, we don't would want. No, she we points to the pot that. filled with like wood splinters. Oh, I see. Yes. No, we don't want that. Y'all okay. y'all got any uh, 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 dragons? I once saw one in the in the desert, but I did not bring it with me. I don't think that no. the people dragons, here would have... Dragons, guards, nibs, that. anything? No. What? Coin. No. I start rummaging in my pockets and start bringing out just flattened pieces of glass that I have and the few coins that I traded with the merchants. Like these. All right, so you've got no coin. Um, I guess I can pull out. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Come on. I have stuff to trade. Um, maybe not right now. Hey. Um, are you like the are, roof mistress here? here? Um, no. I don't know know what that is, but that sounds sounds imp um, important. So yeah. 
You are yeah. that? Sure, let's go with that. Oh, if we are your guests, then thank you. And I start and I hand you over a dagger for accommodations. No, and no. I've no. got a few, a few of those, ma'am. And she kind of points to her belt. And I look at the no, no, puts the dagger away. <sighs> okay. I'm really bad at lying. And then I point at him. At uh, her, sorry. Are you saying this one is lying to me? Yes. That's one of the first rule, oh, rule, rule, rules here. Don't believe everything that you hear, all right? You see a shit, in it. No. Do you want some food, food or not? Let's go. How do I know that this is not a lie again? Maybe. She I will follow your lead. Your dive to divine. No, two you. dragons, two gold coins that are in the shape of this kind of um, that are square, except for the sides are kind of indented in. Lips them around her um, her fingers. Just. Ooh, shiny. Yeah. Want some food? Food or not? Food and ale, please. All right, let's go then. A mango cocktail, please. We'll see if we can fi find a uh, mango uh, cocktail. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, Gus, come on. Gus is snuggling into one of Falja's like Gus. hoods or like flaps. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it does not burn. It's just pleasantly warm. Oh, it's a, he's a... Gus, don't make me snap you. Flow mode. <sighs> Ignore him. You can stay with me. Yeah. I bet I can make you part of the tribe. I'm, I am, I am part of the tribe. Yeah. He's already got one best bud, and that's me. So don't be, uh, don't be <laughs> taking my spot. All right. <laughs> you too. What about his bud? Her bud. Man, we've got a lot of work to do, to do, to do, to do, uh, to do with you, girl. Fighting demons is tiring work, hungry business. Yes. Right, then let's go. And she starts moving out past the the uh, the uh, the ti uh, the, ti uh, the timber and and out the door. I uh -huh. And as I leave, I just like yell at the monks, like a phoenix rising, to encourage the people inside to keep healing and to live. There's another chorus of like, <laughs> y'all stay safe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to report report this. And Can now, Mother bless you. I say, and leave. Finally, uh, <laughs> some some people are arriving with stretchers and things to try and help out. Uh, and guards are sort of like beginning to arrive on scene and look around. Let's skedaddle. Skedaddle. Get sideways. Get and she's oh, gonna it's a noodle. Yes. And she's going to duck into an, uh, an, an, an alleyway if she can find one. Uh huh. There's an alleyway. Uh, I, I imagine you know the city part quite well. Um, so you can That's duck side. into an alleyway. Are you heading away from the docks? Um, still in the uh, the dock ward, but yeah, from away from the the docks themselves. Can we first look at the desert? It is a very close. You want to see the sea? Yes, please. And she kind of peeks her head out again, stare stares at the guards. All right, we can do do a round um a round a round. Um, a roundabout, you know, check that out. Just follow me. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Yep. Kind of dives into the um, the uh, the darkness. I think I know what you are now that I look at you here in the light of day. Mm -hmm. Are you an Eladrin? Oh, Do you, you know, know Selash? Yes, I am. I am Eladrin. Um, a la um, a um, a latrin. 
I've met one of your people. They visited me in the desert. She liked the heat. She was a summer, summer elad, summer eladrin. No. Oh. Well, here's the thing. Thing about us, we can actually change how we uh, we look sometimes. But she was probably of the summer court. It sounds like. She had these beautiful white flowers on her armor made out of leather. She explained to me in great length what the flower is. Well. And she had a hammock. Well, it's probably. Well, it's probably the. Um... Sorry, chat's freaking me out. It's, <laughs> it's throwing me off. I'm just like. It's like, well, we can meet all these small little. Uh, Red leaves and these um these uh these small happy little you know fl <laughs> flowers I can't I can't do it it's like um we could probably find find some though and it'll probably be in the inside but she um, guides them through a few of the uh, the back ways <laughs> and um, out to away from the hall towards the docks and toward towards the piers and she kind of hops onto a snow uh co co uh, uh covered um mast where 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 they um tie boats to just like stands on top on top and just kind of bows and waves to the the uh the uh the seas like well this is the ocean does it have a name hold on Sword sea. It's um, the sword. <laughs> this is the sword sea. Oh, and I go very close to the edge, and I will kneel down and look over the edge at the water. And I reach out, and I will say in primordial, "Hello, sword sea. I Dave. am Faja." Dave literally like lies down flat on her stomach next to Forja and like reaches down her little wings and mimics the exact same sounds that Forja makes. So it sounds like she's speaking primordial even though she has no idea what's coming out of her face. Yeah. <laughs> what it's so cute. I don't then... know where y'all are from, but the but the sea doesn't usually talk. Usually. I use shape water and create a face in the surface of the ocean that looks as if it's smiling and saying something. Maybe it doesn't speak to you because you are not nice to it. <laughs> and if I catch that Falsh is doing magic, I will minor illusion it um, so that another face like comes up from out under the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um... why not play it out, yeah. I have Ridley's been sent from my mother, the desert, and I hope that you will not mind that I will live close to you now. And maybe you can send your elemental my way or a spirit of the land. Someone like Gus here, someone friendly, that would be very appreciated. Or you can say Ariel, hi from me. I hope uh, she made it back okay. Dave doesn't understand what Falja is saying because it's in primordial, but she'll think back to that time we were in the desert and we met that water elemental and imagine that like, it's like kind of similar sounds. And so she'll like do the like hello sounds that she learned. So those two freaks are hanging on the water <laughs> yelling well, at the way. Well, this is going on. Uh... Red Leaf is going to look around for like food carts or some sort of like stalls nearby. I will is there anything? It. After a while, I will just loosen one of those coin shaped glass baubles that I created from my rope and kiss it and throw it into the sea for good luck. Dave jumps in after that coin. Dave doesn't know what Fashion just did. Yes. Like, it, it's not a coin, it's just a piece of glass, a bob. Oh no. Well, if Dave's diving in, Dave's diving in, you're into the water yeah. you go. You don't need to make a check to dive into the ocean, I mean, you can't really miss it. It's cold though. What are you doing? Dave is going to chase the glass uh, disc down because it's shiny and she can't resist it. And like down into the murk until I guess she can't see it anymore. I'm not sure how clean the source case is, but I'm imagining it's kind of like 
British ocean where you kind of hit a certain point it's kind of sandy and grimy. Mm -hmm. And she'll swim around a tiny bit and look for it and then come back up and you just see this cold little Dave shivering. Let's have a constitution save, please. Sure thing. Diving into the ocean yeah. in the middle of winter. Oh, okay. So as you hit the water and begin diving down off this thing, the cold compresses your stomach. You immediately lose most of your wind. And, uh... Yeah, go from there. You're in trouble. <laughs> I reach out a hand and try to pull her up. Come up! Come out there! Uh, so now, Dave, can you make me a perception check to figure out which way is up? I sure I can. Oh my god, I've been in that position before. So freaky when you can't figure it out. Uh, I was at disadvantage as well, so that'd be a seven. Uh, on a seven, you, uh, you're, you're dis disorientated. Um, Falja Redleaf, you can see bubbles coming up to the surface. I look oh at Redleaf and I say, I can't swim. <sighs> I cast. Roll me for this, and she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna take off her coat, take off her boots, take off her shoes, kind of bind her hair back into a, 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 a ponytail. It's gonna. Ugh. I can't believe I'm doing this. You need to this. save her. She's the chosen one of the Kenku. Oh, she saved the divine. Well, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Hold on, Dave. Dive for birds in the in the in the middle of of winter. In, in my panic, the only spell I can cast without a verbal component is minor illusion. So I cast um like a minor illusion that looks like fire all around me because I'm like cold and I'm panicking and just. Fire is the only thing that comes to my mind. So there's like a minor illusion of fire somewhere under this water right now. <laughs> so she's gonna take off her belt. So now, now she's ju ju uh, just in like the like the V-neck, like old-fashioned swash buckler uh, shirt in the, mm -hmm. in the pa pants. It's gonna go, <sighs> and she's going to flip off of the uh, the rail and dive inside. <sighs> Excellent. That will be an acrobatics check, please, for the flip on the icy rail. Dave, during this time, you've been panicking, right? What do you say? Could you please make me another constitution check? And you are in danger of becoming more exhausted. Oh, good. Okay, I, does that mean I'll have to half my hit points again? Yeah. That would be bad. Okay. Uh, constitution. You do have nat 20. Seven. Oh, okay. I forgot I had nat 20, so it's okay. The next time. Does my hit point count? Yeah, your, your hit points halve as okay. uh, you burst into flames under the water. Red Leaf does a double flip off the rail into the water, just as you would imagine. You know, somewhere nearby, someone holds up a card saying 5.8. Um, and in you go. I'm down to six hit points based on halving my current hit points still. Do I. Do, does Red Leaf see her? Uh, Red Leaf will see the flames, but also Red Leaf, I'll need you to make a Constitution saving throw as you've just dived into some icy water. Yeah, it's not exactly my best. <laughs> can I would shape water help in any way, shape, or form? Uh, well, you can change the flow of about five feet of it. Mm -hmm. um, you can move five feet away to see if you can see, Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do it. that. Shape the water around. <laughs> hey. Remember, Chorus, you have an advantage in two nat 20s to use as well. Uh, a 15, mm -hmm. you uh, it's very cold, but you can keep hold of your breath. Uh, now make me a perception check to see if you can see this will be an advantage, because Dave is currently illumined. Mm -hmm. 25. Thank God. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see Dave across the way. I'm going to start swimming towards her. Uh, that would be uh, an athletics check. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use my uh, nat 20 on that because I have a negative one in athletics. Of course. Mm -hmm. so, 
you, you make your way across easily. You can scoop up Dave, and having spent a nat 20, you can begin dragging her to the surface. Dave, <laughs> you're not going to die. But can you make me a constitution save to stay conscious? I sure will. Um, I would like to nat 20 this case. Yes. So the pair of you burst onto the surface. <gasps> my hand out to help them get just up. Just grab, just grab her. Just, just grab her. Yeah. Red leaf, your hair is all frozen together. Dave, all oh of God. your feathers have frozen together. Merciless is their own son. <laughs> I say to Gus, now I know why you made her your chosen one, or great spirit of the land. She really is the deserving one. <laughs> Them out of the water. Chosen does not mean better. <laughs> I create a bonfire <laughs> to heat you up and warm you. As soon as Dave is up on the pier, um, you're gonna watch as um, as Redleaf is gone in a cloud of smoke, and red fall leaves kind of move around. Actually, hold on. Wait, hold on. I think I got something for this. Because I believe... I believe with Autumn Aladrins, you can actually Misty Step and take somebody that's willing with you 30 steps. So I'm going to go ahead, ahead and do that instead, instead of trying to like force a Dave up onto the pier. Got to Misty um, Step right grabbing up. Grabbing Dave is like... <laughs> that works, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and my cave, my cape like billows and there's a breeze and I'm like, no, bad cape. Like, grab it and hold it down. Oh, uh, the, the cape is uh, frozen. <laughs> you just see it like... Yeah, you know, like, have you ever been in a cold stream in a dress and like it all freezes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not personally, but I've seen the effects of like frozen clothes, yes. Yeah. I make, I create a fire where you can sit and warm yourself. Somewhere on the cobblestone. Oof. Control the fire. Don't do that again, because if you jump in, I'm not going to get you next time. Ooh. Hey! Ooh. Uh, I, I have think, no doubt. I think they're casting magic over there. They could be the ones causing the wild magic surges. Get them! Seize them! You can see people I from around grab, the dock running. I grab Dave under my arm and yank on uh, red leaves. It's like, I've, it's fine, I've got this. It's just like, who is, 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 is yelling at us? At the gods. All right, I'm going to try to shiver and I'm going to walk up towards where they are. It's like, it's like, untwist your balls, you idiots. This is Harper business. <sighs> well, you would say that, wouldn't you? If you were the one causing all the wild magic stuff, where's your proof? All right. She's gonna pull her shirt to the side and reveal like a like uh, a pet, a pet, a pet, um, a pet, um, a patch of skin, like right here, and is gonna whisper a word, just like string, and the uh, the Harper, uh, this um, a. Um, a symbol will show up on her skin as a as a as a te, as a te, te, a, te, um, a tattoo. So, nothing's wrong here. I'm just trying to f fish these these people out out of the sea. You can leave. Remember that mark doesn't absolve you, Harper. Yes, I know, but you know us. We don't exactly get get into nonsense like that. Be on your watch. Especially with these Are they new in town? Yeah, they're very very new new in town. Really now? How new? About 12 hours. So they've been around about as long as the wild magic surge has been starting. And all this healing them, fire. Trust me, I've checked. She looks pretty fiery. 
Genasi, have you not seen seen one before? They're all like that. At you least, must have had at them. least the the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire, the, the, uh, the fire I ones are. Genasi. Not a Genasi. I... I am not it's the offspring like, of an Efriti. Like, no, I'm not. Like I am one the daughter of and, and Red Leaf is gonna like turn around to stare at y'all to be to be like this like. Please keep your mouth shut. I'm trying to get you out out of a bad spot. I think we should take him in for questioning. Look, what's it gonna take for you to leave them alone? It's Harper business right now, and I I don't need uh, pa need paperwork. I want to take this opportunity to grab Fauja's hand and be ready to gr uh, to just run. Like this is Dave's escape method of choice in the city. Harper or not? There's been rumors of this healing fire that cocked up around the same time as this uh, as these wild magic surges started happening, which seems to be about the same amount of time that these two arrived in town. Healing fire? Like the phoenix rising? Like the phoenix yeah. rising, eh? That sounds awful convenient. Oh my gosh. It is written. Is it now? You could take Look, us to the roof, mistress, and we could explain everything. Fausha, dear, yes? if, if, if you and your friend, please, would let me handle this, I would appreciate it. Look, how many dragons is this going to cost me? Are you offering me a bribe? No, I'm, ask I'm, I'm giving you a gift in return for, for leaving this Harper business to the Har- uh, the Har- uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Harpers. I know that it's probably been a very long day, day, day for you, and I know that maybe some coin would help with some ale, maybe some food, maybe you like a, a new, um, a new coat that you saw in a shop nearby. Just something, you know, to think about. Make me a persuasion check. And I'm going to use my last nat 20 on that. Of course. Yep. Uh, so on a, with your nat 20, mm -hmm. the, the, the guard can't be bought, you know. I'm not buying the guard. I'm simply showing my appreciation for a job well done. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll leave them in your care, Harper. If should anything else go wrong, I won't be so lenient next time. That'll be 50 gold. And she's not going to push it because it's already thin ice as it is. And she's going to with a strained smile, reach into her pack and pull out um, a small bag of about 50 gold coins and hand it to him. Clinks it. Yeah, that's about right. Good luck to you. Stay safe. Get yourselves to an inn. And if you're seen in connection with any more wild magic surges, there will be problems. Of course. He goes Thank back you. Towards the broken down building. And Red Leaf is just gonna and just gonna turn and give like so you two. You now own the guard? No, I don't own the guard. They just ripped me off for about fifty gold pieces. Wow. Oh. Which is gonna come what out happened? out of your tab, and I know just the thing that can help with that. After we get you some food and some new clothes. And Dave Rose will have magic search. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sure you guys will be looking for I don't know what my last one was yet. I or know. Did... It's not quite come up yet. I've got it in mind, though. Okay. And there was a magical fire here. Another fire than the one I conjured. Oh, this one's easy for you. You forget your own name. For four hours. 
Oh, but I guess when people call you Dave, they're gonna. Oh. All right. So, Blackbird. You wizard. So you, Blackbird. You, Spitfire. You now owe me. I never spit fire. Dave casts Dragon Breath on herself and it blows out this massive flame. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> she, like, she'll try to shut the mouth. She's Dave. No, no magic. Wizard. Are we trying to do some PvP here? No. No. At him. Oh, okay. She's just proving a point. <laughs> I don't know where y'all are from, but I'm here desert. in the city, you do not do magic like that. Certainly not out in the open. It's fine indoors. But right now, it is probably best if we keep on the down low. So it is exactly the other way around from the assassin's hold. I don't outside, know what that is, but sure. Good, but sure. inside you can. Okay. Sometimes. Okay. You different get permission place, first. Bowser up on the roof. So. And I'm going to begin like trying to move her away because I think this guy is a shady wizard and he's not telling us things. <laughs> this this okay. lady, thank you. Sorry, I keep forgetting you're not Kellic for some reason. I'm just like Kellic oh. magic wizard in my brain. <laughs> Look. Okay. I'm, I'm I let a... myself be led away. Um, do you ask want to real quick. Me? I ask you guys. <laughs> <laughs> she starts putting on her boots again, just like grumbling. Crunchy pumpkins don't even know how to. I still have not eaten, I say to Dave. And you are very wet, and it is so cold. You need to do something about that. And I hand you good berry. I can hear your stomach crumbling from here. Wow. Maybe you need awesome. more, and I hand you berry after berry. Uh, Falja, as you're handing out these berries, can you please make me a wild magic surge? Oh, she's. Thank oh. you, Isra. Izzy! <laughs> Hold on, I have good berry props. 100. Oh. Good berry props. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Um, along with your ring that you have found, mm -hmm. you also find a, uh, a black iron gauntlet on the ground. Huh. I picked it up. <laughs> Put it in my pocket. I'm a druid, I don't. I hand it, I, I point, I, I offer it to, uh, Dave. Do you think that is something that you could use? Would you like it? I wedge my little wing in it. It's just one, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just one. Do you see Dave with like one normal like hand wing and then the other one is like gauntlet hand wing? <laughs> Does it have different colored jewels <laughs> on the knuckles? No, it's like just, okay. just it feels cold <laughs> to touch. Okay. I mean, it's oh, no. while flying in the snow, right? <laughs> I like gently use my dragon's breath to like blow on my hands to like warm myself up. You know, she was saving you. I don't think that I would have been able to do that. Yes. Do you think that the wider magic was following us when they say that it only started now and there was a healing fire? Could this be some part of my mother's spirit roaming? <gasps> Maybe my mother is going to create a new desert here. Because it's very cold and bleh here. They could use some warmth. Hmm. I like turn and like look at red leaf suspiciously. She is currently with her boots on, just trying to get the ice out of her hair. There's like a crack. I could make fire to warm you, but we are not inside. 
I'm fine. Thank you, dear. <laughs> uh, Falja, a flyer hits you in the side of the head. I look at it. It's a. Uh, it's about a uh, festival that's going on in one of the local taverns. Oh, look at this! What is a festival? <laughs> hmm? Are you doing it towards Dave or to to Red to Red to Red Leaf? I have paper now. Can I now do the magic? You said when I have a paper and I can do magic. And she like she takes it. Oh, this is for. Oh, they put these up. It's awesome. No, this is for a festival. It says it right here, and I point at paper. Which I am actually rather late to. Should probably get over there. Do you know where that is? Know where it is. I mean, your house Practically is live there. Your house is nearby Redleaf. You could go in for a quick change of clothes mm -hmm. um, on the way. Mm -hmm. Not to like feed you story, but I mean, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I can tell you what. Um. How tall is Fauja? Five foot ten. So Redleaf doesn't ha have any clothes that would fit her. Because she's five foot one. I'm towering over you. She's super short. Um, she stares up and she's like, well, I can't give you anything that would fit you, but my my house is nearby and I need a change cha change of clothes. Yeah, I do think we ate many good berries. That roof did not even hold us up when we landed on there. All right, well. Follow me. Let's get some uh, some comfortable. I've I've got some food there that you can have. It's fine. That is a very nice of you, and mm. thank you very much for saving my friend. You're welcome. Still owe me fifty gold though. Okay. All right, come on. And she kind of like it takes her cloak, and puts it back on again, and heads toward her home. It's um. It's 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 le it's less of a house than an apartment, which is kind of kind of built into uh, one of the shops nearby. Um, Could you the, uh, explain in detail the room that you take them into? Yeah. Um, well, it's uh, the uh, the entrance is actually off to the side, off one be between two uh, two two uh, two buildings. Um, it's up a, fl a, fl a flight of stairs that are kind of a deck in in snow, um, and she leads up to this 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 quaint little uh, door that is kind of inlaid with um, some uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, some carvings. Um, you see her stoop down, feel the edge of the uh, the doorway. There's a click, and she takes out a key, strains up, and goes in into the keyhole and and moves open the door. And inside um, is a well furnished um, single room. There is a bed near one one of of the win the win the win the win, uh, the windows that seem seems to be carved in this this elvish make you know, with this uh this can this can this can this can this can uh this can uh this canopy that um that hangs in these kind of green veils around around it um, the floor is actually seems to be made out of grass. Um, this pure green grass as soon as soon as you step inside um, and there is a, a kind of floating stove to one side that is kindly uh, smol sm smoldering right now and has a few pots and pans on it. I would like to say that when we go inside, Forja will also first let her hand glide along the door frame and find the don't, button don't, click. Don't do that. Don't don't do what? that. Don't do that. That is not um, part of the entering process. It's um, 
Um, it is if you don't know where that is, and if you do turn it on again, one of us is going to get hit by a dart and probably be knocked out. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's 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 my it's it's uh it's my security system. Huh. And Dave, do you walk in last? As Dave walks in, can the rest of you please make me a dexterity saving throw? Oh god. Do I still have disadvantage or how long has Yes, you still have disadvantage. 27. <laughs> that is a nat one. That is a nat one. Um, as Wild Magic Surge 183, uh, the next room the target enters explodes. They take no damage. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's your beautiful <laughs> home that you've just described. <laughs> You baited him into that so hard. <laughs> Carus, I love you, buddy. <laughs> so as soon as she steps inside, there's an explosion, and the whole place explodes in this fiery tinder. She hits the back wall and skids, just kind of stunned. I'm immune to fire, so I'm standing in the middle of that plaza and shield myself from the debris that's yeah. flying around. Yes, you are immune from fire, but not from debris. Uh, mm. So um, let's do some rolls here for damage. Uh, let's see, building coming down. That's that's high damage, I feel. Do we just roll a fireball worth the damage? Yeah, let's do that. One of you can roll a fireball's worth of damage. It won't be fire damage, it will be debris. Yeah. Thirty-two. Halved if you pass. Add a d6 for your extra necrotic damage there, uh, Falja. Um, so you take thirty-six points of damage. So what I imagined happened was the wild magic had been bubbling in Dave, and Dave, being so desperate to find out what kind of wizard uh, Redleaf was, because Dave's convinced Redleaf's a wizard, had like reached out to that frame of magic and kind of been playing with the arcana in it and as she crosses the threshold it had like messed up whatever alarm uh, trap was on there and that's what caused the explosion it was a combination of Dave tugging on that arcana and Dave's wild magic just like causing some sort of chemical reaction that just supernova the room so I'm gonna uncanny dodge so I only take 8 damage cause I can half the half Yep, no, that's fine. And I did. I like, I'm looking up at the smoldering <laughs> remains of my home. I like to really... imagine that Dave's got a pan that's like tumbled down and just landed on her head. And you see like her face go from confusion to shock to horror. She just says, no, 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 no. And, and she's going to try to climb up the stairs and into the, the build, uh, the build, the build, the build, the build, the build, the build, uh, the build, uh, the build, uh, the building. Well, I mean, it, the wild magic surge only says that the room explodes. So if we want somehow magically, the rest of the house can be intact. But that first living room, uh, the nice That's grass. That's the only room I had. That's the only room. <laughs> like it was a one room ap apartment. <laughs> I think, uh, like, seeing this and seeing Red you know how face... expensive a non-one-room apartment is in, in this Dave, place? Dave, seeing this disaster and feeling so awful, literally, like, there's an oopsie-daisy, and she goes to the window and just throws herself out of it to fly away. She knows she's in big trouble, and she can't fix it. So she literally Gus, runs and just throws herself out the window. Gus, I... I need... I need, I need your help. And she's gonna just run up there. I imagine you running up the stairs, Dave throwing himself out of the window and Forger's lying under all that stuff that fell on top of her when the room exploded. It's like one hand looking out and she's like trying to crawl out from under beams and stuff that fell down on her. I think halfway like across, like the, she's gonna, Dave's gonna realize like that Falja isn't with her. Because she'd been panicked and she'd been like, oh, I need to get out of here. And then she's going to realize, like, Falja's not there. 
And even though she's home in her city, she now has this friend that she's responsible for and she will like slowly you turn around, mm -hmm. nearly like lose the ability to fly because U-turning is a difficult maneuver and just like reappear on the window ledge and be like, Bowser! Dave! <laughs> Whoopsie Daisy. What is going on with this place? This is not, this is not normal, right? <laughs> No. And Dave's gonna hop down and try and free Felsha. <laughs> I'll make an athletics and I guess it's gonna be... I Dave. help you, so... Yeah, we'll go with like DC 10. DC 10. Fail. So Dave basically picks up like a large beam or something that's on you and tries to move it and just like her little wings can't because she's got this gauntlet, she can't get a good grip. And she just, she can't free Falja from under the wreckage. And she's busy, like, cowering from Redleaf. Who is not in the room anymore. She ran upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Into the wreckage of the room. How does it look? Scrat? Sort of exploded. Redleaf is, is panicking at this point. Um, she's, she's, she's trying to get through um she's trying to find some things um she's trying to find a brooch that was on her uh her nightstand uh she's trying to find uh her chest that had all all of her gold in it um and she's trying to find a uh a necklace that was that that was on on, on her bed from the last time she 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 was there okay well, uh, the necklace, I think, will be missing. The lockbox containing gold will still be there, though slightly busted. And what was the other thing you were looking for? Uh, I was trying to find a brooch. Uh, well, the entire wardrobe is sort of, like, collapsed and falling through. Um, but you can find the brooch on one of your cloaks in the wardrobe. Okay, she's, she's gonna calm down a second. And start grabbing the things. She's gonna put the brooch and the ne uh, the uh, the necklace into the the ch uh, the chest. She's gonna put a cloak over that and just try to hide it um, as best she can. So it it looks more like a, um, a package. Um, and she's just gonna s just sit there in the room, just a aghast and Dave flew out the window right yep so Dave flew out the window and about halfway across the street she realized she'd left Bowser behind because she'd been in like panicked mode she'd been like back in the city mode where she was on her own and she realized she left Bowser behind so what happened was she u-turned nearly lost the ability to fly very briefly and made it back to the window and I made an athletics roll to try and help Falja out, but I, I failed. I said DC 10. Uh -huh. um, and basically, so Dave's so busy, like, panicking and being weak and trying to help Falja out from under the debris and wreckage at the moment. Yep. Uh, and so Falja, under the debris and wreckage, how are you looking, Falja? Um, I believe the term is bloodied. <laughs> okay. Perhaps no. Dave also looks bloodied right now. He <laughs> doesn't be in good shape. I imagine that one of the beams or something that held the, uh, this apartment up fell down on her and she's lying under all that stuff. And Dave bravely is trying to get her friend out of there. Dave is gonna see if she can get to the, the good berry pouch. And when she gets there, there are like no good berries left because she realizes that Bowser shoved two in her mouth mm -hmm. out of the docks and there's like none left in there. And she feels really guilty. And she like tries to see if she can squeeze her stomach to make her like pass them back out, and it's not happening. Her stomach's like, no, I'm hungry. It's that my good berries. <laughs> so she's just like flapping around, trying to help, and unable to do very much. I'm going to cast. Um... <clears throat> I think I'm going to create another phoenix. <laughs> Another healing spirit that starts healing myself and Dave. And I'm going to use an at 20 in order to athletics my way somehow out of, out of this mess. 
Can Dave help? I by... Hulk. She Hulk my way out of. <laughs> Dave wants to help by using the spell Gust, which could potentially push a person. So uh -huh. she's going to cast it on like the beams to try and push it with some deserty wind. Okay, yeah, you can 100% do that. This is why we can't have nice things. This is why we have nothing nice. That's why we have just a tent. Because this even... is why we're the tent. We can't even have a tent. Yeah. We burnt the last tent we had down. Yeah. And is Redleaf going to... How is Redleaf feeling right now whilst <laughs> they're doing this athletics and gust Red thing? Redleaf is in the room, or surrounded by ash and debris, and just cradling what? her things, trying to like figure out what to do. Just in shock right now. Okay, uh, so Falja, you may make your athletics check at advantage. You look puzzled. I think I said I use one of the twenties, but I can do. I oh can no, 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 no! That's fine. Do. If you use one of your twenties, that's absolutely fine. Sorry, I didn't realize I missed that bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All those disadvantages that I have going on, I don't <laughs> trust myself not to hurt your others more so, when I try to get out of there. With the nat twenty, you can just about push it up and like get it a little bit of height, and as it does, the gust catches it and just blows it to the side of you, so you can get up. Okay. So I <laughs> climbed out of there and start brushing myself off and had sit beside the phoenix holding on to a wing of the phoenix holding on to this so like i think i think i prefer the fighting of the orcs and the assassins this is really from the way Kalek told us about this he said there's food and there's drink and no one is fighting and everything is nice I imagined it very different from what it is. Abe just looks genuinely like so guilty and upset in this moment of I'm home and so far I've like blown things up. There have been men falling out of the sky. My flock now think I'm really cool and look at what I've done and I can't even help Borgia. <sighs> The good news is the flock have uh, been attracted to the explosion and they're coming in to help rebuild. <laughs> They'll act under Dave's discretion. Dave, I think, will actually recognize a few members of the flock. Um, and these are all like regular city people. So I think a few of them may have been like dock hands and uh, maybe even like there is like a roof fixer. Like that is genuinely a job that one of these people has, like a thatcher or something. And so there are people here that actually have some skills that will help, but obviously it won't fix overnight the damage that has been done by an exploding Dave Nova. <laughs> um, and Dave will actually go take the, the pan off of her head and use it as a collection to try and get some money from the flock, because she has none, to oh. give to Redleaf. I also realized something. Does the damage of the explosion that Dave didn't take affect certain little creatures on Dave? No, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. okay. Good. All right, creature is fine. I just remembered I had a pocket mouse and I was suddenly very worried. Oh, no, I, that had me going as well. No, no, the pocket mouse is fine. All of Chorus's shit is broken, but the mouse is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go around and just try and get some money together and i imagine like people understand or the flock will understand what's going on because we can communicate in Orin um between us uh -huh. and we'll get some like money going a few people probably drop like buttons and shit in there because not all of the kenku are functional people but... I'm and i'm starting to mend i have to cantrip mending and i start mending things together sitting there like placing things fusing them so, Dave, can so you make me... Do you guys come back to the room? I mean, we're in the middle we're of that exploded room. room, right? Well, I think so. the thing is, like, you watch as she's just in shock. Her red hair begins to turn white at the tips. It begins to slowly turn stark winter white. 
and you watch as her skin goes from this this copper to this pale snow white and the hair the curls in it just go straight and you watch as her like one good eye goes from gold to dark blue She's oh. now in the winter court right now. Shall I make some rolls to see how well we can get some things at least patched up and how much money I can collect? Let's have a persuasion roll for the amount of money you can collect. And yep. um, we'll... That would be 11. So, yeah, you managed to collect... Uh, roll me two lots of a, one, of a, of a, a, a flipper coin. A 1d2? Yeah, I couldn't rate that uh, and again all right two cool uh so you find 11 gold pieces okay there are thereabouts made up of silver and gold um <laughs> they like you say they're skilled craftsmen so they just begin fixing things and uh want well, everyone to leave I am very sorry, I say, and mend stuff. I don't know what happened, but you asked us to be your guest and we will help you rebuild. I don't understand what cra what weird magic is going on, but we will help, I promise. It will be as good as new, maybe even better. <laughs> I start. It's not like it matters. Question. And she's going to get up and take the chest with all her stuff in it, wrapping a second cloak around it. Like you can see that her form form has has changed. Um, there's like a constant stream of like dark tears. Like not like m m most people, but it's like this kind of dark, almost black ichor goes down her cheeks. And she's just gonna look at you, and just say, "I need a drink," and is just gonna head outside with the chest and start he moving down the street away from them and away from her home towards the uh fey patron how do dave and falja feel about redleaf right now maybe that makes me the biggest idiot of them all a poor woman <laughs> we fell on top of her she's had to jump into the ocean to save one of us then she got into an argument with those not assassins and Dave um, definitely thinks that Redleaf is hiding something and is suspicious because Redleaf has been very careful not to tell us their name or what it is they can do. We still don't know those two pieces of information, but she has been very helpful and we did just fuck up her whole life. So Dave feels pretty bad about that. Yeah. I think we have to make it up to her, right? Dave holds forth the pan with the 11 gold and two buttons in. Let's take that to her and our friends can keep on rebuilding here. And um, you and I would be healed up by now, right? With the summoned spirit. Yeah, how much does that heal? It does heal 1d6 every round and it stays for, I think, over a minute or so. So I can just switch it back between the two. And, and uh, I think even every one I think done. with my exhaustion, I cap out at like 12. So. Oh, I see. I think that Dave kind of turns to the flock and goes, Oh, you lazy birds, get to work! <laughs> aye, aye, skip! Yeah, it just restores 1d6 hit points every round if you're in its presence, so close enough. So I'm just alternating it between you and me <laughs> till we are healed up. Right, I'm going to say I go up to 16, which is half of my actual total hit points. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can head, are you following to the Fae Patron? Yeah. Well, I think we will wrap on the doorstep of the Fae Patron. So is there anything else that I'm you guys would like to it. do? Oh, it's open. It's open. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you guys would like to do before we wrap? 
like all the wonderful things we talked about doing before the session started. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there were some things that we wanted to do, but you can hardly do them now because there would be time. Constraints. I'm sorry. <laughs> Red Leaf is just gonna step inside of the ta uh, the uh, the tavern, co covered in debris and smoke in her uh, her winter court fo form with her stuff in her hands. Just to be like, guys, I need a place to stay. Uh, I'll leave that to our new players next week to take up. Mm -hmm. um, but Is that all of my wild magic surges or is there one that's carrying over? Uh, I think that's all of them. I had the one that was being held. That was the one where the room exploded. Okay, and then I had another one after that, which was... The name for gang. The name for gang, right, right, that's right. Sorry, I keep my notes on my wild magic searches. I thought it would be different. I thought this season would be different. <laughs> but no. In meta, I love Red Leaf. I think Red Leaf is super cool, and I really appreciate the uh, Jack Sparrow leap into the water to rescue Dave. Mm -hmm. That was heroic as hell. That was cool. Yes, it was. Oh, Chorus, you look so salty. <laughs> I had a whole thing about our home. There was going to be a whole bunch of knickknacks and stuff in there. <laughs> if you like. Like... Like the flock are taking care of it, okay? Many wings make light work. Mm -hmm. I mended a great deal of things that I found. Now she's got a bunk with her friends. I mean, you're welcome to stay on the roof with us. Just saying. She doesn't like you guys right now. <laughs> I'm very upset. I can understand why. <laughs> Okay. Took her 20, she, she's had that home for 20 years. <laughs> like her safe place. You blew it up. You maniacs. We didn't I, do anything. I, I just was out that, that I had no idea that was going to happen, by I the know. way. Yeah, no, that was totally I'm me. I'm talking to Chad right now. This is... Okay. This wild magic surge nonsense needs to be changed. <laughs> but now I've worked it into the narrative. Yeah, Dave will eventually learn not to play with other people's arcane stuff. <laughs> well, you guys, why don't we go around? Uh, we can do our usual thing where you guys tell us where we can find you, all the wonderful things you do online, and tell us what your favourite part of today's session was. Hey, Chorus, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. So my favorite part was getting to describe. Getting to describe my character before they were touched by the curse that is wizards and wardrobe. <laughs> um I'm Koros um RPG. You can find me on on twitter.com slash Koros RPG, as well as twitch.tv slash Koros RPG. I am a D D D and D guy. I do some uh, some uh, some homebrew. I talk about lore, uh, fa a fa fa a fantasy bu a bu a bu a bu bu a books. Um, I am also yes, I am also Bob Ross. Um, I have I, I have chosen a new form. Of which to bring myself into this world, and instead of happy little trees, we're going to talk about happy little elves and, and happy dwarves today. But um, I also have a a Patreon. If you like the show and and want to support support me, you you can find me on Patreon uh, slash Koros uh, 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 um, R R. R, R, RPG, and I have my own uh, uh, D and D show called F called Firelight, where I take a guest to their own personalized one shot each week on Saturday at one p.m. Eastern Stan st uh, st st uh, st uh, Standard Time. And this week's guest will be Archmage Derek. Ooh. 
Oh, awesome. So tune in for that. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Thank you. I've mm -hmm. put some of your links in chat there. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> next, uh, who wants to go first? Dave or Falja? Falja, you've got a big old smile on your face. So we'll go to you first. So we'll come to Dave Lars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I have been desensitized to magic searches for now. This is just same old. <laughs> We're picking up where we left off. Um... Hi everyone, I am Tahina Andale. You can find me on Twitter at Tahina underscore Andale. Um, Sunday next, uh, next Tuesday, you can see me here again on uh, Wizards and Wardrobes. The Sunday after, I play Tomb of Annihilation over at Fumbles and Fame. And on the 6th of October, I'm going to plug that right now, I'm going to play Santa Quinn, a celestial warlock in the Waterdeep Dragon Heist. So this season for me is going to be all about Waterdeep, I think. And my favorite part today, I have to say from a character narrative standpoint was becoming part of the flock because that is Forja's dream come true to be part of someone's family or tribe. So that was one of my most favorite moments. And I also loved Gus, <laughs> Sprite, but <laughs> I'm scared of that. <laughs> that was so cute. And I really adore uh, Redleaf. And I'm so, I feel so guilty and sorry for. <laughs> <laughs> we are here for all 12 hours and maybe played for one hour and everything is like going down the sticks. <laughs> so, yes. I mean, but what did we expect, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Last, but I oh sorry, had great fun. So, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you as always. Uh, last but most certainly not least, Charlie. Wow, oh, what a first session! <laughs> that was a thing that happened. I think my favorite bit, my favorite bit, is always figuring out how the wild magic surges make sense in the scenes. Um, but I especially loved once we've gone up onto the roof and we look out across the city and there's just these men falling from the sky over this one area and then we got to go and investigate that and we got to go and meet Redleaf. Um, and I, I love the moment where Fauja and Dave were talking to the ocean um, and that Dave is possibly the worst tour guide ever when it comes to Waterdeep but I also, like I said, appreciated the 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 epic rescue of Dave as she flailed in the water, having jumped off something shiny. I have a feeling we have some debts that we won't be able to pay anytime soon. But yes, uh, big shout out as ever to chat for joining in in the story and for supporting the characters in the story the way you do. I hope you're glad to have us back. I hope we uh, are fulfilling all of your wildest wild magic dreams. And I am really looking forward to adding some new phrases to today's vocabulary and just expanding this world and experience. So yes, um, as for me, for plugs, uh, there's no Warhammer Wednesday tomorrow. We have a week off. But on Friday, I am doing session three of Roll Up, which is my mini show on Encounter Roleplay, which is at 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. UK. And it's all about character creation for different systems. It's very chill and hopefully just makes it all a little less scary and it's all a little bit of fun. We're just finishing up Call of Cthulhu, but we've only done core stats so far. So joining in on Friday, coming to chat, you can really input on my characters and Lindy's characters because Lindy is there with me this week. And then next week, is it next week? I don't know what week it is. But in October, I'm doing a special one shot over on Greg's channel where I am playing myself and it's a zombie outbreak thing and the survival and I, I'm i putting money on it now that I'm going to be first to die. So come and watch. That sounds amazing. I will be tweeting about it, but yeah, there's a special one shot coming up and I only found out today that it's coming up in October and I want to plug it because I'm really excited about it and I'm getting to play with Cleric of Cord. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Lindy's in the group too and um, Jim's wife who is a key member of WebDM's admin crew is going to be playing. She made the, the famous... Uh, what was his name? Like grilled meat, something like that. Crap, can't Grease remember. meat. Grease meat. She made grease meat. That was Emma. She was Emma. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Emma. There we go. I had Susie in my head. I was like, that's not her name at all. <laughs> yeah, Emma, who came up with the wonderful grease meat. And yeah, I'm so excited to play that game over on Greg's channel. And of course, I'm here every Monday playing Call of Cthulhu. I am the keeper in that game, and I have the the best cast. 
for my story. I'm very excited about them. And then I'm here on Tuesdays with the best cast for Wizards and Wardrobes. And the new players are coming next week. So... I can't wait to have the new players next week. Uh, they're we get gonna... to ruin someone else's life next week. Yeah, uh, it'll take some of the heat off of uh, Chorus, maybe. Maybe the new people will uh, attract the ire of chat. Um, but I had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, unfortunately, my favourite part... I, literally, my cheeks hurt from smiling. And I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, Chorus. I, 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 my favourite part was definitely blowing up your house. <laughs> It's fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's to you put so much into it. You know what the worst bit is as well is like you're playing Gus, the familiar, and Gus was being such a dick to him as well, or to Redleaf, to her, I should say. I think Gus, Gus will be my best buddy. Gus will be more consoling in this time of need. <laughs> um. Yeah, but um, so I totally said to the guys before we went live today that we were going to have a really chill session and we were going to go around and do all the scenes that they wanted to do. And then I had this uh, sort of like wave of inspiration and, and whoops. Um, <laughs> Remember the pacing. <laughs> yes. Remember the pace. The pacing, yes. The pace. I mean, really, oh. Scrat, really, it's, it's not all on you. It's chat being so supportive with those retweets, with that Patreon commitment, with those subs, these damn chat supporting you and everything wonderful. Oh, damn. Yeah. <sighs> and already, like, we're on day, we're halfway through day two, and we've already made over 5% of our monthly costs. So nice. thank you very much, everyone. You you guys, we are full time now, so we are, uh, I, I, I'm still working on sponsors, um, and until that time, you guys are doing amazing and supporting me. Thank you so much. We're actually going to take a break now. Um, normally, we would have uh, at, um, at 6 p.m. EST, we would do a 7th C game in this new season. However, uh, Derek uh, remembered that today is actually his anniversary. Um, so he pulled out of doing uh, today, and we'll be starting that season uh, That's that show's premiere next week, not this week. Um, so instead, we'll be back at 10 p.m. EST, uh, where I will be back in the DMC again, and we'll be running The Curse of Strahd. Featuring Madam Gandalf, Oh Baby 190, Kelly Lane, who is one of our biggest Wizards and Wardrobe fans. And I'm sorry, Kelly, that I am taking up your space where you would normally watch Wizards and Wardrobes. Um, but she's going to be playing along with us. And finally, but most certainly not leastly, uh, Alice is also playing in that game. Um, we did a little bit of a Session Zero. They're not in Barovia yet. I've got a flicky-tailed cat next to me eyeing up things. <laughs> And it's like you. Come here. Come I'm going to quickly steal this moment to do a shameless plug for someone else. I want to shamelessly plug Susie, Susanna Grace, who this weekend and last week ran a special two shot at level 20 to round out my experience in a Curse of Strahd campaign. And it was very emotional and it meant a lot to me. And I just want to shout her out as being an amazing person. And I can't remember if she's in your schedule. She I'm is. Really she she is, is in our game on Fridays at 1 p.m. EST. Uh, it's not on this channel. It's over on the Greyhawk channel. I'm. I'm. I've brushed up on my Greyhawk lore in the way that only Scrap can. And um, we will be running. Uh, we'll be running a homebrew bit of homebrew content set in the Greyhawk timeline. It actually fits in very well with the timeline. So if you're a fan of the Greyhawk channel, I'm going to give them a shout out right now. Um, if I you're... had a feeling she was in something. Yeah, she is in that show over there. Uh, so there's a shout out for the Greyhawk channel. Uh, also, um, our artist Ambly is in that session. Also, um, Elven Tower is in that session. And Jess, who is Burst of Hope. Um, that That's going to be an amazing session. So yeah, do check out all of Scrat's programming because he has some really cool stuff coming up and it's really varied. And all of the people in it are super cool. So I, I don't have a single session that I'm not looking forward to. Every single one is full of amazing people. And, and don't forget, if you want to join in on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I think there are two viewer games. I think you sign up via the Discord. 
Preview um, games. Preview we... games. That's right, because you do two on Wednesday. Yeah, we have one shot on wonders at one p.m. on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Uh, we have my game, which is the midweek modules at six p.m. Uh, Kiana runs the one shot wonders, and on Thursday we have Alice's game Argo Thirty Seven D and D in Space at one p.m. EST. Um, so you can sign up for those. The six p.m. Uh, has is booked out until halfway through October. Um, but the others were still looking for people. Just uh, social links. Here they are, everyone. Uh, send me a message on my Twitter to get into one of those games. Um, join our Discord because it's a fantastic place and you can put suggestions in the suggestion box for the Wild Magic Surge table and all the rest of it as the Wild Magic Surges are now critical to this campaign. Uh, YouTube I'm going to be hastily catching up with and here is my Patreon as we are now full time. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so there. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a bit of a, a heftier percentage comes my way of that uh, subscription based funding. Uh, I also have merch. If you want to get your Dave the Divine t-shirts, you can get them there. Um, and we have a competition at the moment where we are giving away some rainbow colored dice, um, which I'm not doing any justice in this light, but check out the tweet. They're very pretty. Um, there's no point linking the tweet anymore because that's all done. Uh, so instead I'm going to take a look at this window over here and do you know what? I can see straight away that Madam Gandalf is live right now. Oh, thank you for that follow. Um... Hmm. Yeah, Madam Gandalf. Let's let's head in. Madam Gandalf. She needs viewers over there. She's. She, I think she's only just started, so she's probably getting just getting I going. Alex needs that support, and she has one of the best raid. Oh yeah. Ever. So it's Ev worth staying just to see the raid interaction. Everyone, stick around for her raid response. Uh, not only that, fill her chite. Uh, her chite. Fill her chite with hap. Fill her chat with <laughs> hype, please. Um, bring in all of the scrap hypes and um, enjoy the raid response. It is a thing to behold. We now run Mondays to Thursdays, 1 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. EST. And on Fridays at 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. EST, it's a full-on schedule. Keep on evoking emotions. We'll see you next week. Bye!